Okay, this is a lucky block. Encased inside this magnificent single block lies endless possibilities. The block could give. Yo! Or the block can take. TNT, I'm out. I'm out. Peace. And today, I am trapped here in this endless void of a small island containing only this one lucky block. Any and all resources that I will need to survive must come from this block, and let's just hope RNG will be on my side. Because, trust me, I've seen what happens when you anger the lucky block. Anyways, today I will be challenging myself to not only survive, but to thrive here, from mob farms to a crazy base, to all the ladies, I will have it all. This is 100 days, one block, lucky block, hardcore edition. So you've seen me do one block before, but not one block, lucky block. And I guess we have a bunch of stuff here. But real quick, it does say, look at the book. This is actually a newer map. This is a newer one block, lucky block map. And it is made by a really cool guy named Aradab. I might have said that wrong, but... Uh, so he gives you this cool book that's like, hey, you should go and check out. Here's the link. I will leave a link to it in the description. And he also gives you a link to his YouTube channel. I'll put that in there as well. And he <laughs> says, use the dirt or grass to build out from the death. So that's nice. But yeah, with that being said, I'm taking the sign now because it's free. It's like real life. All signs are free. And uh, here we are. So we got like a cool set of protection... Iron Armor, Protection 2. We have a bow with Infinity, which is... I would say it's kind of broken, but I mean, this is... You know, Lucky Block, so I guess it's not that bad. We got some Sheep stuff. Ender Pearls. We can make a Cobblestone Generator. And then we got, like, Grass Blocks and Saplings. Wow, okay. So we could actually just get stuff right off the bat. But, you know, I'm not going to get stuff and then risk that stuff. Oh, wait, why am I placing the dirt? That's not that smart. You know, it's okay. I'm not going to get stuff and then risk that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a chest, dump all of this stuff in here because I'm not trying to risk it. And then we're just going to break the lucky block because honestly, why should I break it first if I'm, if I've got a lot to lose? I'm really, really scared. Okay. This is a new world. We are restarting. I did not know you could get this. This is messed up. All right, so here I am back. I replaced my stupid dirt path and we got this and uh, I definitely didn't just reset this. You know what? Let's do it again. I'm... Oh, ooh. Okay. Sea lanterns. Kind of cool. Ooh, ooh. Wait. Lucky sword. Wait, 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 wait. I never really played the lucky mod that much. So I don't even know what this does, but I know it's definitely good. A fish. Yeet. Ooh, ender chests. Okay, I'll take that. And now we have a well that just destroyed all of my bedrock. But you know what? This kind of works out because there's iron on the bottom. And now I have like a underneath area that I could use for the lucky block area. I can't really make a wish with the well. I am speechless. I have no words. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> you know what? We're going for it. We're going for it. I'm going to stand back here. I've seen enough lucky blood to... <gasps> no, all of it! Oh, man. There's a command block down there. Maybe the command block caught some of the drops. Hold up, I got this. Details, entity distance, 500. Are you alive down there? Oh, they are. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I got nothing to lose here. Oh, I don't even have water buckets, though. Oh! Now I have something to... You know what? I'm not going down there for that. We're not doing that. We got diamonds, emeralds, some gold. I feel like I'm starting to... Oh, there's more up top. Ooh. No, villager. No, villager. Villager, stop. I hate you already. Am I crouched? Okay. 
I just I detest you. I Johnny detest you. Hold up. Hold up, buddy. Hold up. I got a, I got a good spot for you. This is like this is maximum real estate quality for you. You probably have never lived anywhere better in your stupid villager life. I know you have crazy trades for me. So get in the hole. No, get no. No, don't die. Get get in the hole. Get in the hole or I will just push you off the cliff, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah, you loser. Look at this. We got really good helmets and stuff. Or like full set of armor. We can get like full crazy diamonds. I don't want to waste the dirt, but I need to build up to get to those. Uh, How rare is dirt going to be realistically in the future? I feel like it's going to be pretty rare. Like what lucky block thing drops dirt? Yo. Okay. We are going to make so much progress in this world. This is literally one day. Assuming that I don't... Okay, gold tools. Cool. That's fantastic. Ooh! Is this actually, like, a good amount? Okay, no, it's just... Six levels to six levels, I guess. When they don't do anything, that makes me... Very anxious. Should I just- should I just make a rule this entire first day, I will keep breaking the block until it is nighttime, and then I will try to start building. <gasps> oh! Okay, that's cool, thanks for that. Awesome. Yo, a beacon? Ooh. We've already got a beacon, and I can actively use it. But I've got, like, no blocks to build with. I am- I don't want to waste all of the dirt blocks. We should start getting wood, honestly. We should start just getting wood. After making enough progress with the lucky block for today, I decided it was probably time that I start farming for some wood so I could actually start building myself a platform to make a house in. Because I do know the more times I open a lucky block, the more risky it kind of becomes. And I wanted to get as prepared as I could to take on those risks. If I had a full set of crazy armor and tools and a nice safe pad away from any of the potential death, then I would be way more set to go throughout this series. Because after all, I am in hardcore. All right, so I waited throughout the night to get as many trees as I could. And I'm down to three bone mill, which I, I figured I'd save. I mean, why not? I have an okay amount of wood, but... Honestly, nothing too great. I do have a good amount of saplings and I do have some apples now. So I have a source of food and I'm thinking we're going to continue this path right here. And we're going to make a actual place for us to live. We're going to build like a cool little platform over here. And we're going to turn it into, I guess, a home. Maybe, maybe we'll just turn it into a little chest area at first so we can kind of start building up our collection of resources and make ourselves some good armor. I think I really want to get armor first so we can start getting some real resources from the lucky block chest. I think maybe for now this should be a sizable enough platform. I mean we're kind of just gonna put like chest storage over here. So I guess we'll make a couple more chests. We'll make like maybe I don't want to waste all the wood on chests though. We'll make like two double chests. So we got like two double chests and we're just gonna like plop them in the middle over here. And then we're gonna start dumping our stuff. I want to make this area a lot safer. I do know that. Especially for like these resources. And yes, I'm using slabs this time. In my original one block skyblock video, I did not use slabs. Because slabs kind of suck. And if you try to MLG water bucket on them, you can't because the water just, it just goes into the block. Which I guess doesn't even matter because I literally never did that in my one block world. Anyways, moving on. Today, we're going to work on armor, I guess. We have protection too. I guess if I die, the world's over anyways. So why put things like this in a chest? I need to have tools and weapons. And if we keep breaking this block, honestly, we could maybe get a decent amount of loot. You know what? We're going to place some slabs around here. We're going to slab this man up. All right, honestly, it looks like trash and I misclicked a couple times, but I just want like this area to be safe for our drops to come and drop. Also, I don't have a pickaxe and the only pickaxe I can make is a diamond pickaxe. 
to mine those iron blocks. So for now, I'm just going to leave them there. And if it strikes lightning, it's going to catch everything on fire. So that will also be pretty fun. Okay, more gold armor. Cool. I'm glad the game thinks that I'm a joke. Awesome. Nothing. Ew. It just spawned a pile of fish and they died. What? Ooh. Ooh. No, 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 no. Oh. Okay, that's gone. I got a god apple, and I got a regular apple. Nice. A clock. That's really weak. More- Dude, it really wants me to have golden armor. I have more golden armor than I have gold. I feel like I'm too far away. This is a good time to use my bow! Bye, loser! I know they have like a crazy hip- Oh, wait. Oh, this could be cracked. Hold up. Efficiency 4, multi-shot, fortune 2, okay, multi-shot's trash. Power 2's okay, flame, looting 2. We got fortune 3 and efficiency 4. That's actually pretty cracked. Uh, I know one of these is an unlucky block and one of them is a lucky block. And the problem is they are now permanently stuck here. So because I didn't have much to work with and it was only day 2, I continued breaking away at the lucky block. And for the most part, I was getting miscellaneous kind of garbage until one of the worst things ever happened. I got a TNT trap. I quickly ran away from it, but it was too late. The TNT blew up my original chest that for some reason I did not take the loot out of. No clue why I did not do that. And it killed my hero villager. So now I was essentially back to nothing. I mean, I had a couple of gold apples and random gold. Don't worry, I had plenty of gold. But now, I was poor. Why did I leave that there? Why did I leave the chest there? I made a new chest area to not have that happen. Small brain, actual small brain moment. Also, why am I building with under slabs? I should be building with over slabs, but it's, it's kind of too late. Oh, I do not even have enough slabs. This is, this is wild. This is not good. I'm trying to get some, like, armor, so this would not kill me. Don't worry, I got, I got three wood from that incident. <laughs> and nothing else to lose now. <gasps> Except for a pile of diamonds, apparently. This is, this, this sucks. Yay, a wishing well. Wow, that's great. At least it got rid of the other two lucky blocks. I just got a hero bow. Yo, look at this thing. Unbreaking 3, power 5, punch 2, flame, infinity, and mending. Absolutely cracked bow. What is this? Hero's bow? Regular bow? Pleh, I spit on you. Hero's bow? You could spit on me. Why did I say that? Is this gonna work? Would, would this work? If I threw this coin on top? What if I threw it? Hold up. I have an idea. I'm a genius. I, I'm gonna throw the coin and break the block. Okay, TNT. Again. Again. What a way to start a day! I am not progressing at all right now. I can't even start making farms or anything. This sucks. I'm speechless. You know what's funny too? I tested this out in creative mode. While I was while I was setting up the world, I tested this out to make sure everything was good, to make sure everything worked. And it worked perfectly fine. I barely got any traps. I mean, there are some traps that could just end me entirely right now. Like, there is the obsidian water trap. There is the pitfall lava trap. And actually, I think those are the only two ones that I know of. It could also spawn like a crazy dangerous mob, which is why I have these. But I need resources. I need actual resources. It was only day three, and progress was safe to say it was slow. And I was already descending into insanity because I was just like a little hamster running on a treadmill with the promise of diamonds and other loot and sparkly things in front of me just dangling there. But no matter how hard I tried, they were out of my reach. Dude, dude he does a lot of damage. I have a full set of protection two armor and he like, that was like a third of my health, man. I don't have any food to get that back. 
Ooh. We got a ton of nether stuff, though. So we could, we could go to the end pretty soon if we keep getting stuff like that. Nice. Yo! Yes, this is the moment. This is the moment that I was waiting for. Okay, let's not die by doing this. I, the sound of the fish dying is not ex Oh, that did not sound like a fish. That sounded like something way scarier than a fish. Okay. We're making actual progress now. I got resources. We got some diamonds. And we got some gold. We got some lapis. We have 11 diamonds, 18 emeralds. I mean, it's it it's good. It's definitely good. It I don't know what I could do with it, though. I need to just get sheer resources, I guess. <gasps> do I have any blocks in my inventory? I don't think I do. I think I'm going to die. Can I break? No, I can't break out fast enough. The anvil's going to kill me. What if I eat? No, I got this. What What is it? Eight on my keyboard. If I hit eight. No, I didn't eat the god apple in time. <laughs> so here I was back at it in a new world. And I was speed running these lucky blocks. Because honestly, I love to gamble. And um, in the process, I made quite a mess. I ended up getting this sand temple with another sand temple with a giant slime block structure on top. I mean, slime blocks are cool and definitely a rare resource, but this was getting out of hand very quickly. This is absolute chaos, man. Wait, that one's bedrock. What? What is that? Okay, attempt number three, and I seem to have gotten myself into an interesting predicament here. I got put into a lava pit trap, and I had a sign. However, I don't have any way to get rid of the lava now. So I have to sit here by hand and break my way out of these bars. This is the true meaning of insanity. After breaking my way to those bars, I deleted the lava and I had a feeling in my bones that this, this was the run I was going to get the proper armor for to actually get going and start the world. If I could get a good set of armor and tools, nothing could phase me. You know, why can't, why can't instead of the anvil trap, why can't it just be like Oprah? Why can't Oprah just drop like a brand new like Honda Civic on top of me? Give me like a 2021, not 2022 because they're ugly. Give me a 2021 Honda Civic. Unfortunately, not a Type R either. Type R's are gorgeous, but they're, they're only manual. I, I don't drive manual. What, what am I even talking about? With my insanity sinking in, I continued breaking away at that block to hopefully get the start that would finally get me somewhere in this world. Ooh. This is like always good, right? This is going to drop me a ton of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It definitely did do that. This is the first time I've gotten this and I've actually had a pickaxe. The joke is on you, you fool. You've fallen into my trap card. You've activated my trap card. Kaiba, there are no weak cards in my grandpa's deck. I continued on pushing my way through the first three days of this lucky block world. And at first, nothing seemed to be going any differently than before until my luck started to seem up. I started getting a lot of different resources like diamonds and gold and iron. And I even had a hero pickaxe at my disposal and then the craziest thing happened to me i was granted lucky potions and i didn't really know what these did but after throwing a couple on the ground i ended up with insane loot i made this brand new horse friend that i quickly made a lead for using some of the slime that i had gotten and after using a couple more potions i had pretty much every buff known to man meaning if i was going to continue breaking lucky blocks I had an even higher chance of survivability. My luck was finally going somewhere. All right, so I ended up getting more lucky potions. That's great. I have a diamond helmet now. I've still got a couple of these buffs, and hopefully I can get more of them from this potion. However, I'm starting to think, you know, I don't really have enough space, and I should probably begin expanding, you know? If I can get a lot of space back, 
then I don't have to take as much risk doing these. I can run away far away and no amount of TNT will blow up my precious horse, guys. And that is where the stuff that I got originally finally comes in. So I've got a bucket of lava and I've got two blocks of ice that I can melt and I can use some iron to make two buckets and get two buckets of water for infinite water. So I got to be very, very careful about how I do decide to do this. I don't want to destroy my one lava source. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll place one block of ice right here. And maybe I could even get away with not using the lava altogether. Because I don't want stuff to catch fire. So I could just place like... I can place a torch like right here. I can break this block. And we can place ice right there. We can melt the two ice blocks and get two sources of water. And then we can make a cobblestone generator. Or I guess... I mean... Our pickaxe has silk touch and fortune. So I guess technically we can make a stone generator, which is even better. Because I can make stone bricks, which are so much better than ugly cobblestone. Nobody likes cobblestone. So now that I've got my two buckets of water, I have enough for an infinite water source. Now we need to have enough blocks to actually build out over there, which is going to be the problem. After gathering enough wood, I made a small platform out of slabs to begin creating my coveted stone slash cobblestone generator. However, while doing this, I realized something that kind of sucks. I didn't have any stone in the first place, so I couldn't even begin making it yet. At this point, it was now nighttime, and because I didn't have the resources, that means I needed to go back to the lucky blocks. All right, I don't have anything to build this generator with, and before I go over here, where are my torches? This is too big of a platform. I do not want mobs spawning over here. No thank you. So I could do one of two things. I could try to harvest Ooh, actually yeah let's do that i could use these i could take the blocks the sandstone from this and build with sandstone it's gonna be an ugly generator but i mean i don't need it for long periods of time anyways this is just like a starter generator i'm also gonna need hoppers and conveniently enough that one redstone drop gave me four hoppers so now i kind of just need chests which I don't have, which means I need to get more wood first. Nice. For now, I have enough saplings. I'm not too concerned about losing saplings, but I do need to be careful. If I keep doing this, I will eventually run out. All right, I really hope I don't accidentally burn down this platform by making this. Um, I guess that's probably something to worry about. It's also not going to be centered because I kind of don't care, but we're going to put the chests like right here. So we'll have like four... We'll have like four chests and then we'll have our hoppers that go inside the chests. I also need stairs, but ironically I can make stairs using these. So it kind of works. This is so scuffed though, overall. Do I have enough to even make stairs though? Actually, yeah, I, sh I should be good. I should probably be good. This looks terrible, but that's okay. Yeah, I've never made one of these using sandstone. It's kind of funny. I do not have enough. But I do already have my signs. You should all do what the sign says, if I knew what that was. Now that my cobblestone generator was almost complete, I struggled to get the remaining blocks I needed to fill it in, and I placed out my water sources, making an infinite water source that I used to fill up the thing, and I put the lava on top, and it was now officially full swing stone production. Plus, because I had my hero pickaxe, I could also gather stone much more efficiently, and I didn't have to worry about it being ugly, disgusting cobble. It was all stone bricks from here, baby. After completing the cobblestone generator, I sat here for the rest of the night with my pickaxe just swinging away, collecting that sweet, sweet stone so I could begin expanding. And not just expanding, expanding the proper way. Stone was stronger than wood, so I didn't have to worry about the TNT possibilities of destroying it. And it just looked nicer and honestly was much easier to obtain because chopping down trees when you're floating over an island of nothing, kind of sucks. All right, the sun is back up, and I spent a lot of my time last night getting as many, or I guess getting as much cobblestone, or stone actually, as I could. My inventory is really 
really full right now though. But I ended up getting what? So we got like a stack in 49, stack in 48, 58, and nothing because I don't have efficiency for it. But overall, that's a lot. Look at all these stone bricks. We have stone bricks already. And now that we've got this, we're going to build back here because I am way too close to this for my own safety. I do not like being here. Look at all these slabs we can make. It's got to be centered too. It needs to be centered because I'm not, you know, crazy. I mean, I am crazy, but not like that. Now that I had access to stone bricks, I began filling in this massive path area to what I would eventually probably be calling my home. Although it was still kind of close to the lucky block, so I wasn't quite sure, but this pretty much took most of the daylight for this day. And just from mining that little bit of stone, I already had my expansion problems almost entirely solved because stone was flowing. Okay, so now that we've got that area kind of built out, I want to temporarily use it to get a lot of wood. But I may have been a bit quirky and relatable. Okay, I've got grass blocks. We can use five. I, I'm out of dirt, though. I don't know if dirt drops from the lucky block. We'll figure out how to get more dirt. But for now, we're going to have to sacrifice some grass blocks, which is fine. We could always get them back pretty easily as long as we have one. So I'm not too concerned about that. But I do just want to have, like, some trees growing in the area. And I also need to light up the area because I really don't want mobs being an issue over here. Not really a big fan of having this whole platform become a mob spawning thing when it becomes nighttime. So I've got to find a way to get some easy torches. Okay, I got one torch in this chest. Nothing in there. Hey, okay, these provide light already, so I could use this torch. And these should be... Oh, yeah, I don't need this torch here. That should be enough. Since Ever since, like, what, 1.17? They changed how lighting works. I always hear about it. People always say, wow, you use too many torches. I don't I don't really care. They're, they're torches. They're very, very replaceable. All right, so I broke my gold axe. I'm going to have to make a diamond one. I didn't want to do this because the second I do it, I'm going to get, like, one of those good villagers. But, I mean, sometimes it just be that way. So I've got a diamond axe, and I'm going to use it to make a lot more chests that we can put over here. And we can begin moving our stuff because I want to break more lucky blocks. However, I don't want them to be like a huge problem. Ooh, there's a lot of dark spots. Do I have enough wool to make a bed? I know I had wool and I have tons of dye, so I could dye any of the wool, whatever color I need. Do I, do I not have wool? Was that one of the times that I died? Did I lose the wool? That's way too dark. Stuff can definitely spawn there. Um, What if I grab like... Oh, that's making me so anxious. Please don't. Let's put that there for now. I don't have any coal. I could make charcoal. I do have a way to get cobblestone, but that's, that requires wood, which I need more of. Out of fear of mobs spawning on my platform, even though I had partially lit it up, I decided to just hang out over here for the night so that way they didn't have an opportunity. I used a bunch of the bone meal that I had to get as many trees grown as I could so I could start harvesting the wood to make myself chests. After crafting enough chests, I began moving all of my items, including my two horses, over to safety, where they no longer had to fear their lives from the sake of the lucky block. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, uh, stop, stop. Uh, please don't. Why do you test fate? Do not make me ride this horse. I, I, <laughs> game, come on. Sheesh. So now that we have all of our horses and items that of importance moved over to that platform, I feel like we have to do more lucky blocks. And if I'm going to do that, I kind of want this to be... Just a bit more secure, if you know what I mean. Like, I, I just, I'm gonna place this like little wall of stone bricks. Just, just so that way, you know, if something were to explode, not saying it will, this would at least be more safe. And now we're ready to break more lucky blocks. Oh, look, we got a whole, <laughs> we had a whole horde of horses. I'm sorry, but this must be done. 
You aren't even real horses. Wait, you are. <laughs> Goodbye. What? What does this guy do? Oh! Yo, I got my own head! Oh, let's go. Wait. New pickaxe. Efficiency 5! Silk touch! It is the new pickaxe! We don't need this one anymore. We spit on it. And then a hero shovel, too. Nice! We are making... Oh, God. Do I even want this? Ooh, it's so much. Inventory filler. Why? I'm only taking them because if I don't, I know down the road I'm going to go, I want this color. And then I will have no way of obtaining said color. And it will just suck. That is the only reason I'm taking this pile of garbage. All right. For good luck, I have got my lucky potions here. I'm going to throw one down to see if I can get all the buffs. Okay, I did get some buffs. Oh, and I got cake. We got resistance and strength. That's actually... That's pretty good. I feel confident with that. So now we're back to this regular... Lucky block way over here. I, I don't want stone tools, dude. Ooh, what is that? How is my inventory full again? It's another god bow. Oh, yes! We got a hero villager! Okay, this is... Can you jump? <gasps> okay, so we have a good pickaxe. This is a really weird hero's axe. Let's trade for <laughs> Bane of Arthropods 5 or 4 Fire Aspect 2 Axe. Fortune 3 Silk... Eh, it's not that good. I actually don't care to keep him alive because those are kind of trash. But I will get some diamonds and trade for a good axe because that would make chopping all of this wood so much more efficient. Come here, friend. Give me. Give to me. I got an achievement, too. Nice! I mean, if you want to live here, feel free to, I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't really care. I don't have a bed for you to sleep in or anything. Should I keep him? Oh, you can only trade once. Yeah, you can just kind of chill. If you die, you die. You know what I mean? Oh, beacon! Beacon! Yes! We almost lost it. Okay, beacon is huge. For now, I'm going to put the beacon in here along with a bunch of my other loot. And I also just realized I need to make my inventory a bit more safe in case anything happens. So we got the pickaxe. We can use to break out of the water obsidian traps. Um, We've got oak fence or oak planks that we could place if we need to stop an anvil from killing us. And if we get the fall into the lava spider trap, I, what do I even do in that scenario? What about bucket of water to possibly place on top of the spider webs? Or we could grab an ender pearl as like a desperate Hail Mary. So since I couldn't quite start any real projects in this world yet because I didn't have enough supplies, I continued smacking away at that lucky block. And for the most part, things were going according to plan until I found the giant lucky cube. And if you notice, the last couple of times I've been using this thing, every time I activate the switch, all of the loot falls into the abyss. Well, this time, I was not going to let that happen because I wanted that loot. So after this thing spawned in, I went on to Mission Impossible. I began using a water bucket to go down underneath and create a safety net platform out of stone that I could use to stop the resources from dropping. That was so incredibly stressful. And the worst part about it is I now have this like platform down here that I think mobs can spawn on. Oh wait, no, no wait, it's the under slab. Cool, they can't. But either way, it, it's now underneath this thing. So I'm hoping, actually before I do it, I could take this iron too. This has been sitting here for so long. I'm not going to touch this lucky block because I feel like, I don't know, it being down here is a little suspicious. And the worst thing about this, I think, is the second I start using the lucky block again, there's a high probability this platform will just die. Let's take the water away so it doesn't kill. Did I get all my loot? Yes, let's go. Give me that loot. 29 diamonds. And it once again took away my platform. I absolutely hate that. That is the worst. 
leather armor. Oh. Was that an invisible creeper? Oh no, wait. So because I blocked this in down here, there's like a small gap. <laughs> Any mobs that spawn get stuck in that and suffocate. TNT, I'm out. I'm out. Peace. Did that just destroy my new platform? Oh, it kind of survived. Wow, this I'm gonna I'm gonna use a lot of stone by just placing it around the stupid lucky block. This is kind of absurd. I do like how those survived though. Oh. How did that happen? Hey, buddy. Oh, he's got armor. Ooh. Okay, this might be the opportunity here. Okay, this. Yes. Okay, we need this armor. We need this armor. You need to stay alive down there. You need to stay alive down there. Come on, man. How many diamonds does he actually want? I've only got 45. So I probably can't even afford all of the armor. But I'm going to get like as stacked as I can get. So that way I can take as much damage as possible. So helmet has protection too, not that great, but fire protection four. Oh, it's also got blast protection. So I can get the shoes. We're going to get boots. That has blast protection four, feather falling two, fire protection two, regular protection three. I can only get one or the other. See, this one's got pretty bad. I'm going to go with the helmet. New helmet and new boots. Feather falling two. Blast protection for, I think blast protection and regular protection will probably be like the things that keep me the most alive throughout this scenario because no, stop villager. Stop. He's trying to kill me. Oh, oh, he's stupid. I'm sorry. I could keep him alive. Okay. We're going to make a boat. We're going to trap this guy in a boat. Yes. Perfect. Right there in the boat. No, no, the boat. Yeah. No, the boat in the boat. Yeah! First villager in the boat trap! Let's go! Let's bring you over to the safe area where you're not gonna get, like, smelted by a TNT trap. We can get a full set of hero's armor. It's not, like, the perfect hero's armor, but it's definitely good armor. We are off to a great start today. So with the new villager trap- I, I mean, sitting back at my house where he definitely wants to be, and my new pieces of armor acquired, I continued breaking away at the lucky block at hopes of getting some dank resources. At this point, the amount of stuff I had stuffed in the chests was getting to be a bit much. However, I really needed every piece I could get so I could start building this world. After getting a bunch more stuff, I can make myself a house. We can make a mob spawner for XP. We can get an enchantment area. We can start making some farms and we can start getting a ton more villagers to actually start our trading empire. I continued doing this all throughout the night and into the next day. And along the way, some of the loot that I got was actually insane. I was finding god apples left and right. I ended up getting a hero's potion. I found a dragon egg and even my first wither skull. At this rate, we were going to become stacked real fast. You know, this is probably one of the most ridiculous starts of a day I have ever had in all of Minecraft. I have a pile of, I have a pig tower with a villager on top in my boat. I'm keeping the villager because we could actually use him to breed. We can breed. He's a nitwit, so he kind of sucks, but I think nitwits can still breed. We could use him to make villagers. Also, now we have a pig farm, I I guess. I mean, <laughs> do you think he attracts lightning <laughs> up there? <laughs> this is this is absurd. Also, great news, we now have enough diamonds. And we have a ton of gold and like emeralds and stuff. We have enough diamonds to get ourselves the remaining pieces of armor that we need. Chest piece and legs. And I don't think we have any use for this guy anymore, but maybe he'll be able to breed how they do. So maybe I can breed him with the nitwit and we could just get villagers going. So now we're going to get ourselves a, we're going to make a new crafting bench. And we're going to get ourselves a shield, since I haven't had a shield this whole time. 
And I know what you're probably thinking, but you never actually use the shield. And you're kind of right. And at this point, I'm not using it on purpose. It's out of spite. Is there more iron down there? All right, so if I'm going to build a mob farm, I'm thinking for the time being, I'm going to put it over here. This is just enough out of the way that it's... Why am I moving that fast? Oh, swift sneak. I have swift sneak on these. Oh, I... I mean, this is really cool. But in this scenario, I don't like it. Oh my... Oh, dude, this is not okay. Yee. Anyways, we're going to build out here. And we're going to make ourselves a mob farm. Because hear me out. I'm going to start building my house. And I just did some crazy math on it. I'm going to need to make a circle out of stone that is 50 by 50 blocks. Meaning I'm going to need a lot of stone. Meaning I'll be sitting AFK stone farming for quite some time. And if I'm going to be doing that, I would like to have a mob farm also producing resources for me. So what I'll do is I'll place this. This will be the center killing area. And then we're going to make a nice little circle here that'll be the, like, platform that this mob spawner sits on. All right, I have been working on this platform. I had a nice little circle area to put down the mob spawner. And I was going to start building a path around it. Kind of like a, so you know, you can't fall off the edge, like a wall. But then I noticed something kind of odd. I'm over here, and it's entirely dark over there. And there are no mobs spawning. So I thought maybe my world was bugged or something. So I actually changed the game rule that allowed mobs to spawn in the world. And nothing is still spawning. Which made me kind of realize maybe the only way to get actual like mobs and stuff to spawn is by getting the spawners which would which would make sense because that's why there's been no like phantoms spawning so the only way to get resources by farming stuff is the lucky block so after much testing i i literally don't know what's going on i think this world's broken i think this version of one block lucky block is broken i cannot get hostile mobs to spawn i tested out in an alternate world I tried changing all the settings. I tried messing with the command blocks. I tried everything and I couldn't get it working. And it's not this version of Minecraft because I did get mobs to spawn otherwise. So that's when I went on to plan B where I tested to see if I could get mob spawners out of the lucky blocks thinking maybe that's what we were supposed to do. Maybe I was supposed to Hit the lucky block, get a mob spawner, get some spawn eggs, and do it that way. But after a long time of hitting lucky blocks in the other world, there was no mob spawner. So at that point, honestly, I was at a loss. And that's when I did some snooping online to try to see if I can find a good solution. And instead, I found this. I found a data pack and a mod that allows you to craft mob spawners. Now, in order to craft them, I need iron bars. I need a diamond block and I need a block of obsidian, which is not that hard to come by. And then obviously I will need a mob spawn egg, which I have to get from the lucky block. Along with that, I have another mod that allows me to craft a key that I can get by using a monster block, monster spawning block, in order to configure the other monster spawners to essentially make them work kind of like a regular mob farm. Because this mob farm, if I would have built it, it would work insane it would be you, you've seen one block sky block before there's nowhere for the mobs to spawn so they just pour out of the thing so this will essentially be the same thing and it will be pretty balanced because i have to spend lots of diamonds which means i have to use the lucky block to get those diamonds and also while i was at it i figured you know i would like to make more progress in this world so to save a little bit of time i may have added oop look at that so the only thing now that i actually need to do is get obsidian because i don't actually have obsidian to make the mob spawner so i need to get obsidian and then once i do find some obsidian i can then build myself the mob farm and we could start getting mobs those two things in my mind i began breaking lucky blocks throughout the night and let me tell you i was not having a good time tonight because i non-stop kept getting the skeleton horse rider this dude flies around obnoxiously like some Walmart great value Santa Claus shooting me with arrows that launch me 10 feet back. Not to mention 
They are extremely glitchy and unpredictable. I wasted my entire night fighting three of these guys. Today was not a great day. You know, jokes on the game. I now have all the iron bars that I need to make my monster spawners. Ooh. Finally, I finally got obsidian. I didn't have to get the trap. I got 14 obsidian. But we can now craft mob spawners. We don't have any eggs besides sheep, I guess. We can make a sheep farm. Yay. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Monster spawner. Boom. And we can actually craft, I believe, more than one. Yeah. This is all based on diamonds. So what we can do here is we can make a second monster spawner. And then we can take this monster spawner in two diamonds. And we can make a spawner key. Now this thing is nuts. So if I take an egg, I can put it into the spawner and it'll become a sheep spawner. And I can use a spawner key to change its range. So I can set its range to a max of 128 blocks, which is god tier. And I can change its speed and I can change how often it spawns mobs. So now this thing is correct. Although, like I said, I don't think it's going to spawn anything because it's there's no grass. Now I just need to get spawn eggs and we are set to go. Oh, we have a problem. We have a little bit of a problem here. Come on. <laughs> I got him. Oh, loser. Don't burn my villager. This guy has a looting three axe that I'm probably not going to get. Boys, today the plan is simple. We were going to get mob spawn eggs. And that is what I spent this entire day doing. I nonstop kept smacking those lucky blocks until I could finally get something that I wanted. Bunnies? Oh, that scared me. Let's go, RGB gaming loot. Even more diamonds and stuff. Beautiful. I'll take extra buckets, honestly. More, more sources of lava? Yes, please. I was actually thinking I was going to have to use water and lava to make obsidian originally. Oh. Oh, they're alive. Oh, God. Okay, they're spitting on me. Go. Get off the cliff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, rabbits. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've committed horrible crimes against llamas. Ooh, iron. This makes up for the pain. Wait, do beacons spawn here every single time? I didn't even think about that. Every time a well spawns, you get a beacon. I want the beacon. No, I want the beacon. My inventory is always full. I was originally thinking my storage is going to be small for this world, but now that I have access to all of this stuff, I might as well just make a full storage. So far, with my luck being pretty mediocre for these lucky blocks, I spent a long time farming them. I ended up getting Bob to spawn a couple of times. And as I continue to test my luck, I piled up stacks upon stacks of resources. I got more diamonds, lots more emeralds, gold, god apples, iron. I even got two end portal frames so I could begin getting my way to the end to fight the dragon. But even with all that work, I still had not gotten the mob spawn eggs. I finally got spawn eggs. I finally got spawn eggs. What'd I get? Ender dragon? Huh? Oh, I lost one. What? Ender dragon spawn egg. Wither skeleton spawn. Wither skeleton? That's bones too. I can get bones with that. Something else dropped as well. What else dropped? I also got cat spawn egg, snow golem, and squid. <laughs> Those go from being super crazy good to garbage. That's actually really funny. Oh no, the other one that dropped is just gone. Oh, that sucks. Finally, do you know how long this has been? And my water just turned into ice. Okay, nice. Look at that. Ender dragon, dude. Ender dragon. That is so tempting if ender dragons were actually worth fighting. But they're kind of nox, they don't actually drop anything. Oh, I finally got sheep! I can finally make a bed! RGB gaming sheep! Okay, okay, I will stop doing the block. That's my cue, I will stop doing the block. Jeez. I may have found six more end portal frames, so we almost... We've got eight, we've almost got enough to make a full end portal. 
And we've already got like tons of eyes vendor. So we could legit just go to the end before even touching the nether. All right, boom, we can make our first bed. We now have a lime green bed. I guess I'll just put it here. Don't want to sleep though. Now that we have a spawn egg for a wither skeleton, we can make a wither skeleton farm. It is going to be cracked. They give you coal, they give you bones, and you can get wither skeleton skulls, so you can get wither stars, which, I mean, I guess nether stars don't matter too much because, you know, we're not really, yeah, you get the point. Beacons are pretty easy to come by. So now that we have what we need, we can build our new farm, which means for the rest of tonight, I will be mining stone. That's right. This is the quality content that you're looking for. Okay, I'm actually kidding. I'm not gonna... I'm, imagine if I just uploaded 100 days of me mining stone. And it's just this. It just loops for two hours long. All right, let's see how much stone I got from AFK mining. So we got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 stacks of stone. That's not too bad. My pickaxe is not doing so great. I did add Unbreaking 3 and Mending to it from some of the enchanted books that I had, but I don't think this is enough stone, which is fine for now. We're gonna at least get started. So I don't actually know how much health wither skeletons have, but a traditional mob farm, you would build up and have a 22 block drop so that all the mobs have half a heart of health. But I should probably look up wither skeletons to see if they're a little stronger first, just to see anything to make it easier, you know? Even though, I mean, I guess if I'm using a sword, it's probably not gonna matter, as long as they're a one-shot. If they're a one-shot, that is fine with me. And essentially, we're just gonna make a regular mob grinder, similar to the one I always make, except this one needs to have three blocks height, because wither skeletons are two and a half blocks. Normally, I would just make them so that they, you know, I could just use slabs as a roof or something, but honestly, it doesn't matter since mobs just don't spawn in this world. So it doesn't matter. So with my inventory full of resources, I began building the spawner. I began by building these four walls up a total of 22 blocks. So that way they could have the perfect drop and be easy to one shot with even your fist. And after that, I began adding different paths for them where they could spawn and the water would push them down. My only concern with this farm was how they were going to spawn based on the spawner. Although with the new key system that I had, I could now change how the spawners behaved. And as long as I placed slabs on top of the ceiling, there was no chance of them spawning on top of the farm and raining down upon me. Anyways, I pretty much spent the entirety of day 13 doing this. And by the time the night had come, I had made phenomenal progress. So it's nighttime now and I officially ran out of stone. I did get this far, I actually, <laughs> I kind of screwed up at first, actually. I was originally making this 20 blocks high for a 20 block drop, just in case, because I didn't want to, you know, risk them dying by accident. And realistically, if I have a good sword and we have like beacons with like strength anyways, they're probably going to be one shot. But uh, I made the platforms wrong. And I did not account for water. So now I accounted for water. I had to actually dig down. So now it's an 18 block drop and i'm hoping that if there's one source of water here the wither skeletons won't be able to use that to fully get back up i don't think they will i think two blocks down is good but i guess we're gonna find out to be honest i also made it so it's one two three four five six seven eight which is the exact distance water should travel i hope pretty sure it is yeah so that way, I don't have to put any signs or anything. I just put trap doors in here, and then all the weather skeletons go, ho, 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 I think I can walk in there. And they fall in, and they fall down to their soon-to-be doom. But for now, I unfortunately need to get more stuff. I need to get more stone. And I actually have a great idea of how to get more stone faster, but I need to repair my pickaxe first, unfortunately. Okay, so in order to get a... Beacon, I need as many blocks of resources as I can get, which unfortunately means I need another platform to place the beacon, which means I need stone. So I have to get stone 
in order to get stone faster, in order to place out the stone, in order to get more stone. So now that I had my brand new beacon and my diamond pickaxe was painstakingly repaired, I immediately got right back to mining as much stone as I could so we could finish our brand new mob farm. I need to find more dirt. I really hope I can get more dirt because that area over there is like going to be hard to get back. I knew it was going to happen. I said it in the beginning. I said it was going to happen that I was not going to have enough dirt. Anyways, of all of the wood that we now have, we can make as many trap doors as possible. 34 is definitely not enough. Now that I had all the stone that I needed, I climbed my way back up using water buckets and I got back to work. I finished building the walls around the edges of the mob spawner so that way none of the mobs could fall out and the area would be fully dark enough to actually spawn. And after that, I added a roof of slabs of above. I was originally going to add a roof and then add slabs, but I figured why waste more stone brick than I really had to. After finishing up the roof, I used all the trap doors on the inside and I made an infinite water source to fill in each of the columns to transfer all of the mobs down to the abyss below. After that, I spent the rest of the night doing a couple of touch-ups here and there and I was ready to add the mob spawner. Boom. Wither Skeleton. And now we grab our spawner key. Hit this. And we're going to do count very high. Speed very fast. Range 128. Meaning this spawner will always be on. Alright. It all comes down to this. Can Wither Skeletons even spawn? Here? Did I just waste my time? So after a little bit of testing, I figured out the issue. For some reason, when you place the spawner on the ceiling, it just doesn't spawn. But now, I placed it in one of the corners, so I placed it like in the center of that platform's corner, and it is a spawn machine. I probably have to decrease its spawn rate, actually, because this is... This is a lot. I'm also kind of scared that they could hit me right here. Oh! They are not one shot. Especially not with this sword. But if I get, like, a hero sword in looting... Dude, these guys are gonna print XP. This is so exciting. Can they actually attack me? Oh, yeah, they can. Honestly, I'm not gonna complain. This is a mission success. So now that we have our crazy overpowered farm that just prints XP and coal and bones, I was thinking we could make it even better by getting ourselves a great sword. Now, these guys over here, they do sell swords, but they're trash. Bane of Arthropods 4, Knockback 1, Fire Aspect, and Sweeping Edge 1. Actual garbage. So I was thinking, for now, I could just make my own sword. I got tons of diamonds. So we can actually take an enchantment table, and we can build ourselves an enchantment setup. Let's put it right here. This area is about to get so scuffed. That's okay. Let's see these dank enchantments one try. Bane of Arthropods. Ew. Gross. Pleh, I spit on it. I could make a grindstone, I guess. And I guess we'll just do single enchantments like that. But that means I already have to go kill more. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to sit over here and we're going to smack around some of these skeletons for a bit. To get as much XP as we can. Dude, this is nuts. Alright, so now that we have a bunch more levels, let's try this one more time. Okay, fire aspect. This could be good. Sweeping edge three, and I gotta kill stuff again. Okay, sweeping edge three is actually the max. Fire aspect two is really good. Sharpness is nice. I guess for these guys, we could go for smite if we wanted to. Ooh, unbreaking three. This is perfect. And back to a couple more smacks. All right, I'm breaking three sharpness, three and knockback. Okay, I guess I am just cursed to have a knockback sword. Wonderful. For now, we'll get better swords, so we're just going to go with it. Knockback two, sharpness three, and breaking three, sweeping edge. All the enchantments are completely out of order, which kills my OCD. But you know what? We're just going to throw it together. And then we're going to throw this together, which we need more kills first. All right, we combine our two swords for knockback two, sharpness four, and breaking three, sweeping edge three, fire aspect two.
two. And then we can also give it looting three. How much is looting three gonna cost? Nine, easy. All right, we pop looting three on this bad boy and I'm going to name it withering away. How many stonks can this bad boy produce? Look at what we've already got to work with. Dude, look at all the wither skulls. We have 11 wither skeleton spawn eggs and seven skulls. Yo! Look at that crisp kill! Oh, it's so good! Look at all the coal and bones. We have as much coal and as many bones as we could ever need. And what's even better is we have all these spawn eggs. So we could literally go up there and make three more spawners and turn this farm into a machine. This is amazing. So now that my wither skeleton farm was an absolute machine beast ready to constantly spew out XP and resources, I was back to getting a large amount of stone so I could begin my next project. I had this idea already planned out for a pretty moderately sized base. But in order to build it, I was going to need stone and a lot of it. And then after that, I was also going to need different types of wood and hopefully other materials to turn it into the masterpiece that I was hoping for. So I found myself back over at the lucky block. Oh, another villager. It was now the beautiful day, day 21, and I was back to the lucky block. I kept breaking it and getting lots of inventory filling goodness like terracotta and every die known to man. But I was not getting anything that I wanted. There was no dirt. There were no saplings. I was not really having that much fun. I did, however, get a bunch of villagers to spawn, and one of them had two pieces of armor that had some pretty good enchantments on it. So I spent my diamonds to get them in the hopes that I could combine them with ones I already had. And after taking them to the nearby anvil, that was not really going to happen. Turns out I wasted the diamonds. But hey, at least the villagers got what they had coming to them. <laughs> there they go. Another unsuccessful day of the block. After sending all those villagers away to their doom and repairing my area to farm the block, I continued breaking away at the lucky block. So, uh, originally I was supposed... Hi, dog. Supposed to get, um, something good. I was trying to get some dirt, you know, more dirt blocks or maybe some moss. But no, I've been at this for three days straight. It is now day 23. And look at all I've gotten to show for. I got all these animals, tons of animals. I did get a new bow. I got a new dank bow that has mending and infinity. Literal god bow. I've been messing around with different sets of armor. I got a lot of different like heroes armor. Got a new axe, stuff like that. Got a bunch more loot in here. We've got more nether stars. We got diamonds, more coal. Got a whole bunch more obsidian. In fact, I was trying to make something with obsidian over there that would like, <laughs> that would like fix that issue. Cause there's a couple of the traps that just like the TNT just blows up. And I wanted to replace the floor of obsidian, but I need more obsidian first. It's a mess. This place is a mess. I didn't get what I wanted. So I guess we're going to have to build with oak wood. I also got some cats. We have cats now. So I've just been opening a couple more of these. And uh, it seems like every time I rebuild this platform, I get TNT and it just nukes it. And I've, I've got cats and a couple of them ended up being um, casualties of war. So I've got enough obsidian now. I've got like a stack in 24. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to replace this platform down here with obsidian. I'm sorry, cat. I'm sorry. Oh, I feel so bad about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, no! Why does it say that? Okay, the platform's not as big as it was, but at least now we have a obsidian platform. So if any TNT drops down here, I won't have to pick up the pieces every single time. So, uh, things are not going much better now. This, this guy's really scary. This guy, like... Oh, I killed a cat. Sorry. He's stuck. How much health does this guy have? What is wrong with you? Wait. This is like a new recipe. Did he drop an egg? What is that? Oh, it's the pig. Okay. 
Did he drop an egg? Why did I get a recipe for killing him? Dude, this lucky block just wants to give me more animals! It's just giving me animals! I need to stop hitting it before... Oh, dude. It, it gave me more animals. Oh, well, <laughs> that's natural selection. Yikes. It, oh, it turned the pigs into a pigman. That's funny. Oh, yay. I love these. These never go wrong. I don't even care anymore. You know, these cats don't exist. I'm just actually... They're a figment of my imagination. That's what I'm going to pretend. Oh, I don't want to break these lucky blocks up here. Uh, Doing it up here is, makes me more anxious. Okay, there goes all of the cats. <gasps> Wait. What is that? Is that... Wait. Okay, no, we're not... Wow, that destroyed a lot of it. But we have obsidian now, so it didn't destroy all of it. What is this egg? It's a skeleton? Oh, it's a cat spawn egg. Oh, dude, that's garbage. You know, at this point, I've spent majority of my stone. You'd think, you know, I, I did that over there. And you're like, wow, you probably spent most of your stone on that. No. In reality, I spent most of my stone rebuilding this platform every time it explodes. Oh. Well, that was a gas. Do you know how many times I have broken this block in the last few days just to to get garbage? My inventory is full of garbage. I just want spawn eggs. I literally just need spawn eggs. That's I need spawn eggs. I need dirt and I need to get wood. I need saplings. If I can get moss as well, that'd be perfect. This is... Whoa. Jeez, this scared me. I'm really jumpy after the amount of traps that I have triggered. Yeah, it's safe to say today is not going well. Get out of here. <laughs> I just... I just want... I just want another type of wood, man. If I could get, like, a spawn egg for a wandering trader... That would be perfect. That's all I want. That's the only reason I'm still putting myself through this torment. Uh-oh. Okay. Yikes. Any more? I know I had blast protection, like, a lot, so I was okay to take the hit, but I just wanted to ender pearl away. The worst part about it is the blindness, man. It's it's just cruel. It's actually so cruel. This sucks. <laughs> this really sucks. Apparently, the wither can spawn from the lucky block. Let's go time. Let's go time. I'm on, buddy. Okay, I, I can't even see. He knocks me off. That's the problem. He's killing too many things. No, dogs! Dogs, stop attacking him! You're just feeding him! No! Alright, it's go time. It's go time. Come on. Whoa! Could you not do that, please? Come on. Come on. Oh! The amount of damage he did! Oh my god! Dogs, I'm sorry. It was really hard to keep hitting him like that. It was so difficult. He took out our enchantment setup. That's fine. That's not a big deal. Uh. Wow. Wait, what is this? Is that a villager spawn egg? <gasps> villager spawn egg! Let's go! 
There's so many blocks missing now. Oh, dude. Okay. We're going to fix the floors first. And then we're going to take a quick, I guess, tour to see what he decided to kill. Is our farm good? Our farm is good, right? Okay. Luckily, he did not touch our farm. Our stack of pigs are gone. A lot. Okay. He got like all the villagers. Give me this dirt block. Dirt blocks are very important right now. We still have some dogs. We still have some cats. Did he touch our base at all? Okay, he didn't mess this up at all, which is great. We need to make like a lava farm, get tons of obsidian, and use the obsidian to make that entire area as safe as possible. Oh, that was not okay. That was not okay. For today, I'm going to get some of this dirt. That's what I want to do first. I've been meaning to get this dirt for a long time now. How do I want to do this? We can do it in one of the least efficient possible ways by building over from here. It's not as efficient, but it's a lot safer. We're just going to build like a nice little safety net down here. I don't think I brought enough blocks for this. I'm not using the wood. We're going to make a nice safety net so that way none of the dirt goes into the void. All right, so we got our wood and we got our dirt back. So now I can start designing this house. But real quick, I thought of something. We have enough obsidian that we could actually go to the nether. And not only can we go to the nether, we could we could go to the nether for a while now. But honestly, I'm kind of curious. I don't know where I should put the nether portal. I kind of, I mean, I don't really want to look at it, to be honest. But, you know, let's, for the time being, we're just going to put it right here. We're probably going to break it and move it, but I really want to see what the nether is like in this world. So I just looked through all of my chests, and I don't even have any... I can't make flint and steel. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way with some wood and lava. I don't quite remember exactly how it goes. This could start it. I don't know if I have to put a wood block inside the portal. I don't think so. If I do that, it'll stop the portal from forming. No, not you. It's got to burn, like, right there. Catch fire, like, right there. All right, now we're cooking. We're cooking. That's... No, I don't want... Okay, almost. Just push it over there. Wait, wait, wait. Can I... Oh, that doesn't work. Imagine if that worked. It wants to start fire and all the... Okay, finally. Finally. Okay. I think if that one burns, either it'll touch that and start, or it'll just go out. I don't know. Now it wants to catch fire. Not there. Not there. Come on. Come on, burn. If it if this block burns out, I think it should light the portal, I hope. Hey, while we're at it, I mean, you can you can go in there. Yeah! Look at that. Where'd he go? Where'd the nitwit go? Oh no. Okay, I figured it out. I figured it out. It, it only took like 5 or 6 minutes, but um if you put another block on the other side like this, it will catch in the middle. So Future note, don't take that long to do it. I should also probably pick this lava up so I don't come back out and walk immediately into this. That would suck. All right, let's go see the nether. If the nether is also one block, I'm going to scream. <laughs> I don't think it is, though. Whoa, it's a real nether. Wait, we have a 4% chance of getting spawn eggs. What can we get in here? We can get skeletons. We can get zombie piglins. We can get those dorks. We can get magma cubes. Look at this guy. What an absolute loser. All right, I came back here to get a couple of supplies for this. So I got tons of coal. I got tons of wood so we can make as many torches as I want. And I got torches to make a path in the nether. I also grabbed ender chests for extra storage since we have silk touch. And we're pretty good to go. Also, I didn't realize this until now. We have 11 out of the 12 end portal frames. Only thing is to get that last one, that means we have to go break the block. <laughs> Which after the wither, I am very hesitant to keep doing. So for now, we're going to adventure the nether. And then when we get back, we can actually start working on our base, I guess. I mean, it's not a ton of stuff we can kind of get. We do have access to all the nether blocks now, though. There's a lucky block in the nether. I didn't realize lucky blocks spawned like in random places. I am really tempted to do that. Should I? I'm going to break it. Okay, it's just arrows. 
I thought I was gonna heavily regret that. Wait a second. I just had the biggest breakthrough. There's gravel in the nether. We can get gravel. You know what that means? We can use gravel and dirt to make coarse dirt, which we could use to farm. We can get infinite dirt now. So we now have access to as much gravel as we want. Wait, this has silk touch. Cool. I do not want it to accidentally give me like something else. Look at all this gravel. We can also get flint for flint and steel. Yo, this is cracked. So we sol we solved our dirt issue. We can make as much dirt as we want now. Which means we can start making crops for farms. We can start like making cool areas. I wonder what else we could find in the nether that would actually get us somewhere. After discovering gravel in the nether, I sat here collecting this stuff until my inventory was full. After that, I placed down an ender chest and began shoving it in there. While I was at it, I also grabbed a bunch of magma blocks in case I wanted to make some kind of mob farm that kills the mobs. And I also grabbed some glowstone because it was easy free real estate. While grabbing the glowstone, I looked off into the distance because I thought I saw something peculiar in the basalt biome. And what do you know? It turned out that there was a nether fortress, just barely visible over there. Complimentary shaders makes the nether really blurry off in the distance, so it was just a little bit difficult to see, but now I knew where I was going to go next. Okay, so the nether fortress is way over there, and I was thinking, you know, how am I going to get over there, and why should I get over there? And honestly, I've got a lot of the resources I can get from the Nether Fortress. But I'm thinking I have a good chance of finding some cool stuff inside of the chests. Anyways, I've got enough gravel for now. And I'm thinking, since I have so many saddles, I could just hitch a ride on a strider and just go straight across. Only problem is kind of coming back. There's still so much gravel here too. I don't know if it's even worth the risk. I could get like a blaze spawn egg, maybe, and bring a blaze spawner to the overworld. But again, I don't really need that. Another thing I want to try is killing these guys. I know it's going to be a bad idea at first, but if I kill enough of them, I get a spawn egg. I could make an infinite gold farm. I kid you not, right after saying that, I killed this guy and he dropped an egg. Let's see if I can get a magma cream spawn egg. Come here, buddy. Oh, wait. Nice. Let's go. That was surprisingly easy. Just like dad when we were born, I'm leaving. So what we want to do, we want to get ourselves a hoe. We're going to grab the existing dirt that we already have. So as you can see here, it costs two dirt to do this. So we make four, cur four coarse dirt, place it out. We hoe it. And we dig. And now we got four dirt. Let's go. Essentially, as long as we have gravel, we now have infinite dirt. It's just dirt with extra steps, unfortunately. Oh, I didn't mean to make a farmland. All right, there we go. Now we are already up to 60, not 69 again. I, I don't do it on purpose. It just happens. We have 69 dirt now. So with the infinite dirt that we now have, we can kind of do anything we want. We can make a nice garden area. We can make as many farms as we can. We can even get villagers, get their trades down, and then trade for infinite emeralds, which will then get us pretty much anything we want. After getting back home, I began piecing together the resources that I would need to begin building my base in a chest out front of the area. Except all I had was oak wood and stone bricks. I sat here beginning to piece out my base and I was just not happy with it. So I began trying to figure out what I was going to do to get a real base. All right, so I've got a new plan. I was going to build this. It's ugly. I, I stripped that wood in the middle and I stopped and I was just like, yo, I cannot build this. This is it's not hideous. It's just uh, it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's no, it's just no. It's not great. Not a fan. I, I do have an okay amount of wood, but instead, massive brain idea, I can actually get wandering traders. 
I thought Wandering Traders would not spawn in this world because nothing else was spawning. Turns out, I am wrong. I'm thinking about building a massive platform over here that we can use for, honestly, whatever we want. I was going to build out there anyways, but this is a good opportunity. So with my new plan in mind, I got to building the new platform. I spent all of this night and majority of the next day building away at this massive square in the sky with the hopes that maybe I could get some wandering traders to spawn in and trade me that sweet, sweet wood. So at this point, I have been searching to see if I can increase the spawn rate. I was actually kind of wrong before. I was thinking of pillagers, like wandering pillagers spawn based on block updates. Wandering traders spawn based on time played. So like every 20 minutes, it'll like try to spawn one. And if it fails, you have to wait another 20 minutes and then you have a high chance of it spawning or a higher chance of it spawning, etc. But I actually had a different idea because I found a farm online stating that like bells, like villager bells, somehow increase the spawn rate. I don't know if that's true or not. So it got me thinking, can you craft a bell since I haven't gotten any bells? And no, you can't craft any bells. But upon typing in bell, I noticed this. I can craft spawn eggs. We can make all kinds of cool stuff. But I tried typing in like wandering trader. And I cannot make wandering trader. I can make cats, make rabbits, llamas. So anyways, we're actually going to get the bell. We're going to get a bunch of bells. We're going to get a bunch of bells and just place them around. See if it increases the spawn. Um, in order to do that, I need to get a villager. And we just so happen to have gotten a villager egg. So we can use this villager spawn egg. And we can make ourselves a monster spawner. And we can start spawning villagers. So for the time being, I'm probably going to regret this. I'm going to place this in my base. It's going to be a slow spawner. I'm not going to make it like crazy. But let's see if it actually... Okay, so default, speed, we'll make it fast, very fast. We're gonna keep the range just like, oh. It works. Okay, we got, we have three villagers now. So now we got villagers. Wow, if only getting villagers was this easy in vanilla Minecraft, imagine. Okay, we got, we got our villagers. Now, which one trades, I think it's armor, meaning I need a blast furnace. I don't have a blast furnace you know blast furnaces are actually one of the worst things that you have to craft in minecraft because you need to take stone and smelt it twice to get the stuff like who actually makes smooth stone it's so inconvenient i'm just hoping that when i do make it these villagers will still want to trade this will be the beginning of our emerald empire in one block also, we can make zombie eggs using rotten flesh, which we've got, and once we get eggs, meaning we need chickens. Can I make chicken eggs? All right, for now, we're going to do it this way. We're going to we're gonna do it this way, just because we've already started doing it this way. We're going to pick up that blast furnace, and we're going to go begin trading. I need lots of iron, which I've got. Hey, which one of you idiots wants a job? Who wants a job? So unfortunately, this day ended up being kind of a bust because none of the villagers were taking the job. They all just wanted to sleep in the one singular bed on my entire island and they didn't want to cooperate. So I had to go kick the villager out of that bed and go to sleep myself instead. All right, it's daytime now, dorks. I know, oh, oh, yep, oh, okay, glitch block. Cool, job. Coal? I don't have any coal. Oh, wait. I have an infinite source of coal. Hmm. Let's get rid of all these blocks out of my inventory. They're destroying my inventory right now. The capitalism begins. If I can make some kind of pillager or what, what is it? Vindicator? If I can make Vindicator spawn eggs, I can make an emerald farm, a literal emerald farm. That's going to be so cracked. I can set up like a trade empire and I could set up like an actual physical farm. Yes, Bell. All right, now we just need lots of emeralds. And I have plenty of iron. Yes, good, good. The capitalism is really flourishing today. The video I watched had something about the Bell choosing the nearest player to it to spawn a 
potential wandering trader on? I... I don't know. No... no clue. Maybe that'll help. If not, this guy is going into the void, because I don't like his face. So we're gonna try plan B now. So I've got more lucky potions, but lucky potions aren't quite what we need. We're gonna try unlucky potions, because these sometimes spawn different types of mobs that we normally don't get, like spiders and stuff. Now, if I can get spiders, then I can actually make more string, since there's no other way we can get string right now in this world that I know of. We're actually... I guess we could do cats, but I'm... I'm not making a cat farm in Minecraft. That is so cursed. I am not okay with that. So instead, we're just gonna yuck these lucky potions over here and see if we can get any biters. Ooh, not touching that. That is not okay. You do not want to be in the middle of that. Oh. What even was that? Is that just arson? I mean, I'm a big fan, but... I'm glad this is not a wood platform. Imagine if I built with wood. This would be so cursed. Wow, that was very uneventful. All right, so I figured out a lot of the recipes and they require chicken eggs, right? But I can't get chicken eggs. However, that doesn't matter because I found the most important recipe and it does not require chicken eggs. So first thing we're gonna do is get our villager and uh, these guys are gonna, <laughs> they're, they're, they should look away. They should look away at what's about to happen. So we got villagers. We need villager spawn eggs. Come here. Oh, the, okay, okay. That's that's enough. That's enough villagers. That's enough. If I kill them all, there will be no witnesses. That's like a life lesson. Not a single one of them wants to drop me an egg. All right. What are your trades? Oh, ho, 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 wow. They can't have bad prices if none of them are alive. What is this guy doing? Drop me an egg! If one of you drops me an egg, the slaughter will end. Hey, buddy. I just got my villager spawn egg just now as I've prepped an entire like killing chamber. So you know what? I want more than one egg. I want more than one. I didn't build all that for nothing. Hey, buddy. You guys like torment? I heard you guys love torment. Very high speed, very fast. No one can escape. No one can escape. Try to escape. And so, now that they were all trapped, I spent my night becoming the Aaron Jaeger to these villagers. I was viciously slaughtering all of the villager kind. This was finally retribution for all of the drama they have given me all of the trauma they have given me through all of these years playing Minecraft. These villagers are now atoning for the sins of their ancestors. And in the process, I was stacking up on spawn eggs. Well, now that they all disappeared or went for milk and didn't come back, no comment on which, I am up to four villager spawn eggs. I don't know why the drop rate for villagers, absolute doo-doo butter, terrible drop rate. So just in case, we're going to put one of these in this chest as a backup. And now, now the magic happens. Blocks of emerald and emerald. Is it going to let me just craft it? So we take our villager spawn egg in the middle. One block on the top. Emeralds on each side. And one gold block. Wandering trader spawn egg. Boy, after all this time. Now we get our Wandering Trader spawn egg. We have all of our emeralds on us. Beautiful. We're going to go over to the spawner. And we're going to farm Wandering Traders. Yes! Okay, they're invisible. That's not... Oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay, this... Uh, okay, stop. 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 Please stop. They're so annoying. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna go to the next day and do this. <laughs> that was oh wait, 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 no, no, no escape, no escape. Okay. Yikes. And now my dreams have come true. <laughs> Look at all the villagers. All the wandering traders. Okay, so first we're gonna get eight dark oak saplings. Dark oak acquired. We got sugar cane. I don't know if I have that yet, but I sure do now. Spruce saplings! I'm grabbing a ton of them just to ensure that I have them forever. Oh, sand. 
We have sand! Yes! Okay, unfortunately, you guys, now that I have the trees that I want, you kind of got to go. Wow, look at that. This pile of wandering traders just disappeared. That's crazy. But for the time being, I'm going to go on a nice little wood collecting montage. Especially since, look at this. I can get some of my infinite source of bones to grow the tree. Boom. And then I can just use an axe to instantly cut this boy down. Let's go. And we have spruce wood. We can finally begin building our base. So my axe almost broke again because of how much durability it uses. But I now have probably what I would say plenty of wood. With all of my resources at my disposal, the second the sun came up, I began building. Overall, I had a general idea of how I wanted this place to look, and I knew which types of blocks I wanted to use, but I didn't really know exactly how all the details would come together. So I spent these couple of days just piecing together things one by one and figuring out what looked good. And after enough time, this base was really starting to come together, especially after adding the nice light touches of oak fences with lanterns beneath. This base was looking gorgeous. At this point, three days had now gone by because I am quite a slow builder when I don't really know what I'm building, and I was making good progress until the craziest thing had happened. There are zombies. There are zombies, what? Where did you come from? A zombie raid spawned. How can zombie raids spawn when mobs can't spawn? What? I can already make a zombie spawner. So I don't actually need all these guys alive. I could use the zombies from the zombie spawner to infect some villagers. But like, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. I saw one zombie. And at first, I didn't think much of it, because I was like, you know, it's just a zombie, whatever. But then I was like, wait, there are no mobs in this game. How is there... How is there a zombie? So I guess even though all the villagers are technically dead, this place still counts as a village. Good to know. What a good way to get a zombie spawn egg as well. With that disturbing experience behind me and a newly acquired zombie spawn egg in my inventory, I was back to building. At this point, I had pretty much built out the first tower's front facing area and the entrance to my home, and I was now ready to begin replicating. Now that I kind of knew what each part was going to look like, this process was going to go by much smoother and way, way faster. Overall, I was working on this base for about 10 days. By the time I was finished, it was now day 42. And when I say finished, I don't really mean that in the literal sense. I just mean the outside. Because it took me 10 days to build these massive towers and begin the walls. And it was looking a little more castly than I originally wanted. However, I was still very happy with where this was going, this base was going to be incredible. So we have like a cool little catwalk up here. We have all of the towers. You were able to go up them. So like each of them, we have the center area that we can build whatever, like an enchantment setup. We can have a cooking room, etc. All four of these rooms will be used. And each of them, except for the one that I'm trying to show you, ironically, has a ladder that leads up to the roof. And I'm thinking at the top of each of these roofs, we could put a beacon. It may not be like a full tier five or tier four beacon. Not saying we can't afford that. It's just that would be too big to fit up here. But we could fit like small little beacons just for the effect. Just to have the cool beams going to the sky. It is going to look sick. All right. So I was doing some thinking about what I wanted inside of this base area. And I had an idea. So uh, upon designing this, I didn't entirely think of the chest area too well. So I pieced together this area right here. This, if it is four chests high and this many, it should end up being about 80 chests. 80 double chests is not quite enough, I don't think, for a full organization. But there will be a lot of things that we're missing 
as well in this world. So I think for now, it'll do. And if there's any issues in the future, I can always figure something out. And just like that, I was now prepared to begin making item frames and organizing my copious amounts of loot. I'm pretty happy with this chest area so far. Um, I do have to go under here to light these up, which is kind of scary. But I was thinking we could have some nice, like, variations in wood kind here. So we have, like, our nice uh, dark oak area down here. And then we have kind of spruce, which is a little, little bit lighter. Honestly, dark oak and spruce go so well together. Gorgeous blocks. There we go. Look at this place. It looks great actually i guess we're gonna halt the building project for the time being we're gonna take a little break on this and we're gonna try to get chickens which means we have to farm the lucky block and if i'm gonna do that i want to be extra careful so we need more obsidian to make a bigger platform underneath as like a safety measure and i also need to have a better safety measure against like the wither all right so we now have one two three four five six buckets of lava in this chest and then we got 19 more buckets. That's probably enough lava for what we need. I sat here for a lot of the night, placing my buckets of lava into the infinite water pool that I had made and harvesting all of the obsidian. Luckily, because I had haste from the beacon, this did not take that long. And after getting all of the obsidian, I went over to the area underneath the lucky block and began placing it out as an extra extension of my security net to hopefully catch any chickens as I continue breaking the block. All right, today is the day we are breaking lucky blocks. Uh, not the most excited about that. I mean, they're fun. Just a little scary though. So we're gonna grab one gold and I'm, I'm gonna start doing precautions here. We don't really need haste. So we're gonna swap this to resistance. Ain't get resistance too yet, but Resistance will definitely still help. So now we got resistance. Let's see if we can get ourselves some other buffs from... Oh, nice. We got like... Okay. And more horses. That'll definitely not go in the nether. Okay. I actually didn't want this. Okay. Lots of horses. Cool. Cool. Lots of perfect horses. Uh... This is kind of okay. These guys will all be bait in case anything actually happens. The very first thing I broke was the temple. Oh boy. Okay. We're going to take the gold and then, oh, okay. Well, that gold is a casualty of war. We're going to take that gold. We're going to take the diamond that we left here for like a year. All right. Let's just break all of this for some free blocks. Oh, oh, it scared me. It's a killer rabbit. Oh. That just dropped a lucky block. Wait. Silk Touch can pick up lucky blocks? How have I not found this out yet? Okay, why are they all... Wait. Can I upgrade the... What if I can upgrade them to like lucky... Like super lucky blocks? Or... I think there's like different versions of lucky blocks you can upgrade to. This is the lucky block that, that respawns. Can I pick up that too? I can farm lucky blocks with silk touch? That's so broken. Oh, we got dogs. Ooh. Protection three. Ah, it's not that good. If we do, do another 100 days for this series, which honestly, I feel like I really want to, let me know in the comments what we should start naming these dogs. Oh. Okay, so one gold block makes it plus 60 luck. Okay, each gold is worth plus six. So that's plus 60. That's a 100 lucky block. Should I go for it? We're going to go for it. We made a 100 luck lucky block. I didn't know you could pick them up with Silk Touch and change them. This makes like... Dude, this is a whole new ball game. All right. Oh, this might actually pay me back. Oh, man. I'm so done with this crappy enchantment, dude. I am so done with this enchantment. Uh. Sir, I made a wish. Wait, did did my thing ruin the wish? That's messed up. Aw, oh, man. That sucks. 
Oh, not this again. Not this again. You know what? We got more gold. Let's try it again. I don't know if it's even worth doing, but let's make another super lucky lucky block. We're not going to place it over here because even though it's luck, I still don't trust it. Yeah, that was that was two gold. I spent two gold blocks to get a bunch of nether crap. That is not worth at all. Okay, hey buddy. That's the first time I've seen you. What's up, big guy? Get out of here. <laughs> and thus began the cycle of breaking the lucky block yet again. I sat here throughout the night breaking it, continuing into the next day in the hopes of finding some dank loot and the one thing that I needed the most, chickens. This is absolutely huge. We got the final end portal pieces. Okay, I may not have gotten the chickens yet. And I have been doing this for a good amount of time now. But we now have 16 end portal frames. We have all 12 portal frames that we need to build a portal and go to the end. We can now fight the dragon, get shulkers, get shulker eggs, like spawner eggs. And we could also loot the end cities for tons of dank loot and ender chests, which gives me more obsidian. And on top of that, we get the coveted elytra which means we can now fly. But first, I need to make an area that I could actually place the ender portal that I wanted to stay at because you can only place end portals once and you can't break the blocks. I mean, at least not the traditional way. You can break them in weird ways. I just don't feel like having to deal with that, if you know what I mean. Oh, wait, that's the sound of chickens. Wait, oh, chickens, we got chickens. This is not a drill. No, 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 no. You guys need to stay alive. They're all babies. No, 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 go, go back, go in there. You need to stay alive, you need to stay alive. No more lucky block. No more lucky block. Oh no, I don't have any blocks. Uh, I need blocks, I need blocks. No, 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 yes, chickens. We have chickens. So now that we have chickens, we can kind of work on the, the room for the end portal and continue our base. That surprisingly went by a lot faster than I originally thought it was going to. I should have thought about chickens in the first place. I just, I didn't know how valuable they actually were going to be. I actually had this great idea where we could add a, so we're gonna take away that from being a, we're gonna stop that from being a wither skeleton farm. And we're gonna put like four vindicators up there. And then we're gonna put a villager trapped in a box in the middle. So all the vindicators run down and we'll have four vindicator spawners up there. And it will be an absolute emerald generating beast so now we're stuck waiting on our chickens to uh grow i guess so i actually had this idea since we could upgrade lucky blocks and stuff why not the lucky bow and the lucky sword i feel like there's still a gamble of course but like we could take two blocks of gold and turn this lucky bow into an actual lucky bow and then what is it what does it even do? No, I don't want to blow up that. Let's shoot the pit. Wait, no. We're just going to not shoot this bow. That's probably the, the more wise idea. We'll test it out in the future, if I remember. But I know even with it being a lucky item with plus 100 luck, you still lose a lot of the times when you use those things. However, today, we're going to work on, I guess, a place for the end portal. So I wanted to make this area down here go down into like a downstairs central area and then have maybe how am i actually going to do this and then have like maybe i can make like stairs maybe i could do like break one right here break one right there and put ladders and i could have ladders that go down there and then oh yeah that's a really good idea wait a second so like we could replace this with spruce we're gonna use actual planks too since I'm tired of the slabs. The slabs scare me. I'm going to be honest. What the? And then this can be like a nice way for us to look down on the area and see our map table. So you can have our map table in the center and then we'll have the actual paths that go around it. It'll be like the center floor and we can have like ladders that go down here and here on each side that'll lead us down there. And then we can have different stuff in different directions. So like we can make like a path that goes this way and we can put the end portal down there. Okay, this is 
probably the scariest part about one block skyblock is doing stuff like this. Oh, this absolutely shreds my anxiety. And boy, did I struggle. I sat down here absolutely fighting for my life just to get that wooden platform placed out. And even though this wasn't really that big of an area to build, this still took quite some time. By the time I had the middle platform kind of built out, it was already now nighttime. So I kind of got this area going. I put pillars down so I know like where the ladders need to be. I don't think it's going to be this far down because if I put like a table area in the middle, I don't know, it, it might just not work. Maybe the table will be part of like the roof instead of way down here because I don't think... I don't know. I'm, I'm going to figure that out. But more importantly, I looked over here and that chicken is an adult. Meaning that all of our chickens should also be adults. And it's been enough time that they might have even laid eggs. So let's go check on the chickens. <gasps> we got eggs! So now we can make a chicken spawner, which we can use to get more eggs. And we can also make vindicators! We can get vindicators! Okay, I want to do that first. That's really exciting. Actually, no. One thing, one thing at a time. First, we're going to get one gold, and we're going to make a chicken spawn egg. So we can now make a chicken spawner. And now we got chickens! Yeah! So you guys can just chill. Uh, you guys enjoy your home. It's very cozy. Not a prison. I don't build prisons. I build houses. Say it with me. House. We're going to make four Vindicator spawners. So I will need obsidian. Take half of that. I will need four diamond blocks, and we're going to need emeralds, which we now conveniently have. All right, so it's boom, 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 gold on the bottom, and an axe. Boom. Vindicator spawn egg. Now we can make four monster spawners. Now we have four monster spawners, four vindicator spawn eggs. This farm is going to be cracked. So I don't want to start spawning vindicators yet because they'll just smack my cheeks the entire time. I need to make a little spot for like villagers to get stuck in. So, okay, so I kind of got this little tester area. This will allow them to see the villager. And then I'm going to make slabs for the top. So that way the villager can't even imagine escaping. Yeah, he is trapped, so he can't escape. So we're good there. And then we're going to place a slab over top of him, just for a little bit of extra, like, safety, maybe. And that'll be the slab that indicates this is where this structure actually is. All right, so we got a new roof area. Now we just got to place out more of these spawners. I crafted four of them, even though one was already up here, so that kind of benefits me. All right, so this entire area should be ready now. I added holes up here, so that way I can use spruce to place, uh, to fill them in after putting the eggs in. I am not doing that down here. That is not safe. Now, we just got to get rid of these, and we should be pretty much good to go, actually. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, count very high, speed very fast, range 128. Does it spawn? <gasps> okay, they spawn. Okay, they're, they're paying attention to me, though. They want me. If I place this here, will they run towards the middle? Uh, they're running after me. They're not running after the villager. Yeah, they really- they- oh. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, no. This is gonna spawn a raid. If a banner guy spawns, it's gonna spawn a raid. Oh, this is bad. Where would a raid even spawn down there? Oh, don't tell me that those are- oh, no, 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 no. Cannot stand you guys. Okay, so how do we stop banner guys from spawning? I didn't think that raid banner guys would spawn. So we can't do this in a village. Especially since this villager's here. We cannot do this in a village. So we're gonna have to turn this into some other kind of farm for now. 
that will actually benefit us. With my original idea for the Vindicator farm not working because of the Banner Boys and potential raids happening, I re-added the Wither Skeleton Egg to one of the spawners, and I filled in the remaining gaps in the roof of the spawner before going back down to figure out what I wanted to do next. I'm gonna make a cow spawn egg and let cows build up in here. They'll spawn in the middle block and then they'll just kind of fall to the edges. You can make a crazy cow crusher doing that. So egg in the middle, we got gold on the bottom. We got two of these and cow spawn egg. And now if we put this bad boy in here, this should start just pumping out cows. At this point, the sun was beginning to set in the world, even though I hadn't really done much today. I just kind of hung out near the skeleton spawner, collecting as much XP as I could until both my pickaxe and my axe were fully repaired. I then spent the rest of the night grinding the cow farm for some more leather so I could make item frames for my wall of chests. And while doing this, I was constantly annoyed by the sound of phantoms. Just listen to these guys for a second. After listening to the torment for enough and gathering enough of both steak and leather to make the item frames, I then added the item frames to the rest of the chests before going to bed to finally rid myself of these sky demons. I did have an idea. So since we're gonna build the area to go to the nether, oh, sorry, to go to the end soon, I wanna get as many fireworks as possible so we can go farming shulkers, try to get a shulker spawn egg in the end so i'm gonna make a couple of creeper spawn eggs to spawn creepers up there to mass farm gunpowder okay it is now this is gonna break okay so we're gonna go very high very fast and high range and we can actually turn this into a snow golem and it will just spawn Tons of creepers. Oh, I see them. We got creepy boys in there already. Boom. Gunpowder. I do think if I stand too close to them, though, they can see me. Dude, how much gunpowder did that get me? Yeah, they can see me and they can explode. Oh, they could fall into the... Oh, that's bad. I've also spent the entire day doing this. Look at this. We got our, we got our creeper spawn eggs. And we have pretty much infinite gunpowder now. I don't even need this much gunpowder. This is nuts. So I used the circle generator tool again to find the smallest circle I could make that wasn't just a square on the inside. I don't want the map table to be square. And the smallest circle that I can make is seven by seven. So seven blocks tall, seven blocks wide. And that would mean I would need 21 maps to fill the inside of it. Now, I'm actually going to make a map Oh, wait, I think I need paper first. I should have. I have sugarcane now, but I should already have paper. I had tons of paper at one point. I definitely don't think I threw it away. But with everything that happened, who honestly knows? We can make a compass, put the compass in the middle, and... Door of the Explorer says map. This will be, I guess, are we going to center this? How are we going to do this? Let's just right click it. Why is the whole map gray? Are you telling me that because the ground is the sky, the whole map is gray? Why is that part with the lucky block black then? Oh, the obsidian. I guess we're not making a map table. So with me not knowing what to do with this space now and me also being unable to actually make a table using maps, I spent the rest of this day just kind of piecing together random things down here until something stuck. I added a new floor that was a lot higher up. I added extra space around the edges so I could actually climb down the ladder the proper way. And I began closing in the area and making a room that I could build the end portal in. All right, so you can see it sticking out over here. I have the area where my end portal is going to be. And then you won't obviously see it as much because there will be a platform over it in the future of probably like a big, I mean, maybe villager trading hall, maybe like a farm area, maybe like a animal area. I don't know. But this is the kind of idea that I had, right? So you see this path, this is going to be the bridge. 
Then we have the little bit that goes up here. And that is where the portal is going to sit. Underneath is just going to be the decorative room. And then the bricks will go all the way back as one big square. That'll all be one big squared in area. But on the inside, it's going to be super decked out. However, I want to go to the end now. So we're going to go to the end first, which means today we are building our end portal. All right, so I don't want to screw this up. So you always got to place from the inside. So boom, boom, boom. 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 One last pearl. Ho ho! We are ready to go to the end. It is time to absolutely delete this Ender Dragon because these potions give us strength too. For six minutes oh this sucks i'm just gonna yeet that is next time me's problem because i don't want to deal with the ender dragon you knocking me off of that all right we drink our potion and we are now absolutely stacked after arriving in the end i drank my potion and i began the most intense fight of my lifetime and by intense, I mean really, really easy. At first, the dragon was being an absolute jerk, and she shot her magic all over the top of this tower I was trying to water my way up to to get as a vantage point to shoot other towers' crystals. But after that minor setback, I was popping off one shot at a time, breaking each and every one of the crystals. After finally sniping the last one out of the cage, it was time to fight. And let me say, with this potion and my crazy weapons, I did intense damage. Between my crazy snipes of her face and probably butt cheeks, and my swords, unreal amount of power, it only took two perches, and she had been defeated. Defeated the Ender Dragon, the most difficult task in Minecraft. That's not easy. Definitely not easy. It's not one of the easiest, most underwhelming things ever. All right, now that the Ender Dragon is dead, it is time to go explore the Nether. Luckily, this portal over here is actually above some solid land, so we don't have to, you know, worry about death. All right, so we're going to build up, and we're going to make a trap door, actually. So let's make another crafting bench. And we're going to make trap doors, which will be used to get into the portal. Since you can use ender pearls, but they're just, they're just not as convenient. And there's a high chance that you miss and, you know, throw the portal way too far away, which can just cause, you know, unnecessary problems. Also, an idea that I had in this lucky block world, if we continue it, we could totally kill the dragon. What is it? 26? I think it's 26 times. We can kill the ender dragon every single time all right it is time you're going through oh oh not cool are there no end cities in sight there are lucky blocks which is interesting all right you know what time it is time to lag the game by cranking it to 64 render dist whoa 64 render distance with shaders and looky what we've got in the distance oh nice it's also oh there's two of them okay so we got an end ship which means elytra is already secured we got another one over there oh there's another end ship what that's the end island i have never been able to see the end island before so now we begin our long long journey of building out this is gonna take a minute let's just ender pearl right you know what just to be safe i will i will be a small little baby and just build over closer now we're gonna ender pearl and we got unlucky again we have to now build across this entire chasm yay no you're lying there is another end city back there I mean, once we have an elytra, it doesn't really matter. We can just fly. But look at this distance I have to bridge. What is this? Let's go. It's all smooth sailing from here. Apparently, now it's just a massive end island. Normally, end islands aren't this large. 
but it appears to just keep going the entire way. Also, I spoke too soon. I know I have to build across this. All right, now that we are at the end city, it is time to find us some shulkers. You guys are, whoa, we got one. So with the, with the shulker spawn egg, we can make a crazy good shulker farm. We can make it so there's only a couple of spots they can spawn on. We can just sit there and just kill them with a looting sword. Come on, die, die, die. Nice, we got a second spawn egg. Okay. In here, we have a crappy diamond sword. We have... Should I even... I'll take them. I'll take them. We have beetroot seeds, too, I guess. I mean, I don't care. Ooh, we have six diamonds. I'll take that. We even have... Oh, we have a mending pickaxe with efficiency. This is like a perfect pickaxe. Let's go. All right, it is time to break out the shulker box. So we got dragon egg. We don't need all these ender pearls on us. We have our chorus fruit. We have a bunch of diamond goods. We'll put the extra bucket in there. We'll take the beetroot seeds. Like, just to have them. But honestly, we don't really need them. We got iron. And we're almost full on the shulker already. Boom. Elytra. All right, so now... Oh, yeah, wait. Now that we have our elytra, we can place down an anvil... And give it Unbreaking 2. I know Unbreaking 2 sucks, but that's still fine. We can always just change it when we get back to our house. We can just disenchant it and then give it Mending and Unbreaking 3 and make a perfect Elytra. My armor is really close to being broken. I might just... I might just leave the end for now. Honestly. Give me... Give me the dragon. Yes. Okay, after finally finishing up that last set of loot rooms from the final end city, I began flying around in search of the portal to get out of the end. Because at this point, things both in real life and in the game just weren't really going in my favor. Even though I did keep finding excessive amounts of end cities. I was trying to find a portal and even on the way back, I just kept running into end city after end city. And of course, I had to take the elytras because I am a loot goblin. Like I have said a million times, I cannot resist. Oh, I was in there so long. It is so hot in my room and everything that could have gone wrong did. My recording stopped. My dog peed on his bed. You, you get the point, but I came out of here with so much stuff. So all of my armor is real damaged, but that's okay. Because look at this. Look at the amount of elytras that we came out of there with. But for today, since we now finished our end trip and we have access to an elytra, a lot of elytras, I'd like to get back to working on my base. My base is definitely a huge priority. Because this is gorgeous, but on the inside, it's not really finished. So if I am going to work in here, the first thing I have to do is finish enclosing it since I didn't even do that. So I'm thinking I'm just going to replicate what I did over there, but over here, since I want this to also have a pathway that leads off into another area. And then once we have that, we can start working on making like a roof and finally enclosing this and making it into a real home. This is going to be amazing as sad as it is i actually ended up spending majority of this day working on this little wall i pretty much had to copy it from the other side block for block and it still took a bit of time but by the time the sun had began to rise this area was complete and my base was officially walled in and looking pretty good i need to figure out where the roof is going to be this is not going to be an open concept base as much as it does look nice, I'd prefer to have a nice, cozy ceiling, like, enclosed area. So, originally, I was thinking we could line it up with this. But the problem with that is if I line it up with the actual inside of the wall, then it wouldn't be very castle-like. The middle area was supposed to be lower, so I'm thinking more like right here. We're gonna do slabs, so that way we have a little bit more space inside of the base, and that way it feels a lot more cozy. Now that I've got the corners of the roof filled in, I decided to square off this middle area, 
I didn't want it to all be the same kind of spruce. And I'm actually thinking about making a bigger glass dome. So what I want to do now is I want to take the dimensions of this block and I'm going to pop it into a calculator to make a glass dome for me. There's like that website, the circle generator that I told you about. God tier website is going to make this hopefully not painful for me. And if it is painful, then I'll just kind of, I guess, wing it. I don't know what else I could actually do. Conveniently, so this ended up being 18 by 14. Conveniently, if I were to fill this in with a glass dome, it would be about 200 blocks of glass space. Now, because I'm building upwards, I don't actually know what I'm going to need. Although I will say, this looks really cool now. I prefer this so much more over the, the previous idea. This is way better. It's so cozy in here. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this so far. This is kind of nuts. Although one thing is, I don't know what to do with these now. These like pillars, maybe I'll lead them up and then make, make a stone bit around the top like a stone layer. And overall, this process did take pretty long, but finally, after all of the problems were finished, I ended up with a pretty nice final product. I now had a glass window dome in the center of my base, and more importantly, I could officially call my base enclosed. I was no longer going to get wet every single time it rained in Minecraft. Anyways, this day was a huge success and progress on my base was coming along nicely. So yesterday I had a little bit of an interruption from sky demons, but this actually turned out really good. So I ran out of glass for the edges. I'm not sure if I want to do glass in the edges or not, or how I want to leave it, but I did put these pillars and I, I built them all the way up. And I'm thinking those blocks there were actually temporary blocks. I was going to remove them. But part of me is thinking that I should go up there and replace them with actual spruce. Because they kind of look good. I could also do that. That kind of works, actually. Now it's giving off kind of like a greenhouse vibe up here. I just have to make sure all the corners match. They basically should, minus just this. We get rid of that. And in the future, we could actually change the stained glass, but... Like I said, I am entirely out of glass, so if I wanted to fill in these corners, I couldn't even if I wanted to. I actually kind of ran into another problem. So I've been trying to find good places to put them, similar to that, with like the grassy uh, leaf ex like aesthetic that I was going for. And I kind of did this, but if you're noticing where it's kind of sitting, it's kind of hard to hide stuff on the inside. So I actually put some leaves right there. Which I think works, because I think what I will do, I will be doing is I'll add like a chandelier up there, and I'll add lots of like leaves throughout the inside of the space over time. And then that way this whole area will just look really like nature-y. It's going to look really nice and comfortable to be inside. At this point, I was on a roll for working on the base. With my glass dome finished, I began lighting the interior to my liking. I added redstone lamps to as many corners of the room that I could that makes it both light up and look really aesthetically pleasing. And after that, I went through with lanterns to add even more decoration and lighting. Unfortunately, halfway through this process, I did run out of lanterns, so I did also have to go back to the nether to collect a whole bunch more glowstone. But luckily, I had that nearby vein from before, so it was G-G-E-Z. By the time it was the morning of the next day, the inside of my base was now well lit and gorgeous. This place just keeps looking better and better. Look at the lighting in here, it's so nice! So, to accompany that nice lighting, now there's one big thing I want to do, and that is the floors. I want to figure out what kind of flooring I want. I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of this. It can't be too much spruce, but if we like layer it with this nice like dark oak slabbing, honestly, it could look really nice. Anyways, this is this is our house. This is like honestly really really enjoying where this house is going. So yeah, out here is looking I mean, it's still a mess, but look we no longer have a pile of chests. Our huge pile of chests is just gone. Which is... I mean, it's still a mess, but you know what? 
it's a cleaner mess. So anyways, now that we have all of that cleaned up and our base is looking really good, we can start moving on with other bigger projects. So one thing I wanted to do was get sand. And I I was thinking about a way to get sand. I have red sand. I wanted to make a small TNT duper inside of this end portal. So that way we can get a ton of TNT. I'm only going to do probably one side because I mean, hell, it dupes three or was it? Yeah, it dupes three per push and it pushes like twice every second. It's insane. So if we do that, then we can get tons of sand. We can use our creeper farm over there to get tons of gunpowder and we can make TNT and go to the nether and get netherite. On top of that, there's a couple of other ideas I was thinking of. So if we want to get lots more iron and gold, we could risk using the lucky block, which is stupid. That's small brain. Lucky block, bad. Or I could try to get an iron golem spawn egg. If we can take iron, so you take a bunch of iron and we can get pumpkins, we can make iron golems and try to get spawn eggs. That's what i want to do right now actually we already got tons of jack-o-lanterns i just got to do it in like a safe area where the iron golem's not gonna like yeet me we're gonna go boom 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 wait <laughs> boom hey what's up friend hey man can i can i smack you i am sorry kind of is is he not going to attack me? Wait, do iron golems that I create not try to attack me? Ooh. Ah, you guys are scared of the cats. Okay, so we got the recipe. Oh, I didn't even think about that. We can just use the recipe. Yo, this is perfect. This is like infinite iron. We're going to get all the resources and we're going to bank. All right, we got ourselves a jack-o'-lantern or a, a carved pumpkin. And now we can make iron golem spawn egg. And the coolest thing ever will happen here. All we have to do now is make a killing room for iron golems. After sleeping in a bed last second to get rid of those annoying sky demons, I was now ready to begin my operations on day 71. The first thing I wanted to do was start building a platform out and over so that way I could begin building those mob farms so that way I could generate resources as I continued to play. The only problem with that is I was pretty much out of stone again since I had spent majority of it building my massive base. I continued working on throughout the night filling in this area until I had an idea in my head of how I wanted this farm to look. By the time it was the next day I had already built out the path as far as I wanted it and I began laying out the design for each section of the farm including a place for iron golems, a place for gold piglins, and a place for pillagers and their emeralds. Okay so as voiceover me probably just told you which by the way kind of have a little bit of crush on that guy anyways as voiceover me just told you i have this area all planned out so we have our primary path here with this still in it i don't know if i'm going to keep that or remove it um for now it could just do its own thing it's just making gunpowder good stuff so we have our path which is eight wide that's going to go out here to this little central area then we have additional paths that are eight wide and ten long that will go in to a 20 by 20 block right here which will be one of the farms there will be another 10 long path right here and then a square right there which will be another one of the farms and then that same thing will happen right here which will be a third one of the farms and i'm thinking i probably want the safest farm the iron golem farm right here although i also am using lava for that so i'm not quite sure i know it's super far from my house but i just don't want to take any chances the emeralds are going to be over here because they're going to be the most dangerous. Not so much the pillagers or the, what are they called, vindicators, but the evokers. I'm more so scared of the evokers. So that's going to be over there. But overall, this area is going to look good. But now that we do have all of this in place, we can actually begin building ourselves the iron farm. So for the iron farm, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to make a water square like a square water collecting basin up top 
it is going to push all of the golems inside and the golems will then fall into a lava trap which will then deliver all of their goodies into a couple of hoppers with a massive pile of chests so that way i just get infinite iron we can also make roses that way i'm probably gonna have an auto sorter that will divert, like divert the roses to a different chest but i mean realistically we don't need bone meal so there's no point in doing that with the roses and i mean what what good is you know what's the harm in having a chest full of red flowers i I guess. So now that I have my area built out to make the farm, I have been in a creative world testing out ideas for farms for way longer than I wish I had to admit. I've been here for like two or three hours trying to figure out an efficient way to make the farm. This is kind of what I've come to. So I have a top platform here that goes nine this way and nine that way. And it becomes this nice, perfect little shape to dispense the water. And you'd be thinking, well, if it's, you know, nine that way, Nine that way it's a 17 wide on both sides platform how's it going to fit on that area that you made that's quite small well it, it's just gonna have to sit above it i guess um i tried to make this smaller but for some reason anything smaller than this design makes the water not spread out on the platform properly and i know this is kind of messy we got like guys getting stuck on these but if i put them any higher it also doesn't work and I'm kind of done with it. If it's imperfect, I don't care. If it's pushing out this many golems, it doesn't matter. It spawns so many, that doesn't matter. So it pushes the golems down to this level. And these areas push the golems down to this level. And they get pushed into the center, which is where the killing chamber will go. Which I didn't feel like building yet. So I just spammed the lava everywhere. So these guys could all have a nice bubble bath. I think they'll love it. Okay, we're back in the regular world. And, um... I guess slight change of plans. So when going through the list of items I need to build this farm area, I am going to need glass. I mean, I don't have to have glass, but if I want to look nice, then I need glass. So unfortunately, instead of finishing that farm first, we're gonna go ahead and make the duper. And I actually just remembered that in order to make this sand duper, we have to destroy part of the end portal. It, it's kind of unfortunate because I wanted to make this area nice. I wanted to box this area in, make a really cool end portal room that's like super decked out and designed. But I mean, if I'm doing this for the sand duper, that is 100% going to ruin that. There we go. Beautiful. Oh wow, that did just touch the ceiling. Okay, it is the next day now, and surprisingly, this took no time at all to build. I expected to take like majority of the night, but it didn't take any time at all. It was especially made super easy because I had all of the things I needed from the lucky blocks, like slime blocks, redstone repeaters, sticky pistons, redstone torches, and redstone, that, that's it. So, as you can see here, this bad boy works. And I guess I'll explain it. I've used it before in a video, but you put the sand here and this essentially takes the sand and pushes it into the portal while pulling it back at the same time, causing it to drop into the other dimension. Into the end. And typically while building this, I would also make a like nether portal with a minecart that goes back and forth to keep this chunk loaded so I can keep this running while I'm in the end. And I could also make a collector system in the end. But since this is a small scale thing, I don't need a ton of glass, you know, maybe an inventory at a time. I'm probably not going to bother. We are pretty much good to go. I don't even think I have to do anything else. Ironically, I built this ceiling the perfect height that I needed for this. Go figure. So I just placed these here and we're... We're just good. I should just be able to go boop. Uh... Uh... Um, I, I did a couple of changes just in case this might affect it. I don't think it will, but I encased this area with more stone because technically this part's supposed to be like dug out of the ground 
I don't think that would make a difference, but redstone's very finicky, so sometimes... Like, having this go into a wall, sometimes that's actually surprisingly important. So, really hope this doesn't just break again. I will be very upset if it just... What just happened? It didn't break, it just dropped the sand. There's no way this is patched. This is like 1.19. I think I just figured it out. And this sucks. So when you place the blocks next to the portal, it should look like this. Where the block is just barely overlapping the portal like that. The problem here is it doesn't. It's too low. Because in the video, they weren't using shaders. Yeah, I'm following a video guide for this. They weren't using shaders. And I, uh... It looked like it wasn't up here. They said to put it right there, but... Oh man, that means the entire machine has to be rebuilt. So that is exactly what I did. I spent another Minecraft day tearing apart this entire machine and putting it back together for the third time in a row. I was not very thrilled to do this, but finally my machine was working and I could actually get sand so I can get glass so I can make my stupid iron farm and move on with my life. Duplication worked, look. 64, 32, stack and a half of sand, let's go. So now that we have our glass smelting, it is time to begin working on the collection area for the iron golem farm. I had some potential ideas of what I could do for the farm on how to, you know, whether I should separate the roses at the bottom or not. And honestly, I kind of just decided that no, I do not really care. Not at all. So we're not going to separate them. I'm just going to have it be a dump chest and we'll be good. Now that I finally had all the supplies I needed, including the glass to build my iron farm, I quickly set to work. I started out by using those hoppers that I placed for the collection system as a center to make the killing chamber. After making the killing chamber, I added the first layer of water capture that would push the remaining iron golems all the way to the center where they could meet their doom. And now I was ready to add the iron golems into the spawners on the top and officially start collecting my infinite iron. This looks phenomenal. Like, this thing's so weird looking. Like, it's it's not bad weird looking. It's just... It turned out so cool. Why? Like, look at it. This thing's great. <gasps> no, did I build it too? Oh, no. I built the pushing chamber too low. This is so much work to fix. It took me an entire day, but it is complete. We have officially fixed... We've officially fixed the problem. So we have this new area up here. The walls are higher. I added extra layers. And we're we're way higher up now. I think three blocks higher. So there should be no chance at stuff going wrong. I hope. So we're gonna place out both of our spawners. One, two, boom, boom. Remove these bottom blocks. And last time, based on how often the uh iron golems were actually spawning. I'm probably going to lower the settings a bit. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, come on, water. Push them down, push them down, suffer. Yeah. This is looking good. I'm going to keep it on the lower settings because they do kind of pile up a bit. I know there's these corners right here that are just problems, but I mean, there's not much I can really do about them. I don't really feel like changing the entire design. As you can see, the golems do move out of them on their own. So we're good. Look at this bad boy. This thing looks great. We have infinite iron. Let's go. This thing is producing. Let's go. Now that my iron farm was finally producing and boy, was it producing. I spent the rest of this day kind of just chilling. I hung out a bit and watched a bunch of the iron golems smelt themselves out of oblivion. And I went back over to my trusty sand duplicator, start stocking up on even more sand that I could use to make more glass. And more importantly, I could use to make some more TNT so we could begin farming for netherite. Because ideally, netherite is not going to take that long. So that way I have more time 
to make the rest of my world beautiful. So, uh, after AFKing yesterday, let's say there is a... Just a little bit of iron. We got just a little bit. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Sorry, six and a half stacks of blocks within a day. Um, it's safe to say the iron farm is fully, fully functioning. And still just... Oh... There's so many. It's really cool looking. This is going to look so, so freaking good. And I had this cool idea when we start producing grass that we're going to just fill in the gaps in between with just like fields of grass and we're going to like make them nice. We're going to put trees and stuff. It's it's going to be, it's going to be gorgeous. But today, now that we have our iron farm done, we are moving on to making the gold farm. So I have one or two options. We can make it a water chute where they go into like water and go up and then get dropped down. Or we could just build it like this, where the spawners are up top and they drop them from, you know, the top. I'm not really sure which of those things I want to do. But first things first, this platform has to be naturefied. And voila, it has been naturefied. Look at this bad boy. It matches now. I didn't add the grass area yet. I feel like I'll just come back and get to that since, I mean, it's I don't have any grass anyways so so with all these ideas fresh in my mind i spent the next day planning out what i was going to do for my pigmen farm the first idea i had was that maybe i could just use a water-based delivery system to push the pigmen into one central area where that way i could either kill them manually or have some kind of automated kill system i didn't really know how this was going to work but I began building the area that was going to be that little killing chamber anyways. I ended up using gold and glowstone, and I went to the nether to pick up some blackstone to make this a nice little gold farm kind of touch. And after looking at the blackstone with the gold, let's just say a certain wrapper would be very excited about this build. Anyways, after getting that together, I decided that I was going to try to make a wither rose killing chamber. This way, I could have all the pigmen sit in the central area and just die by wither rose, and I didn't have to build a super high up farm that drops them to their doom. I've been working on this so long, for so long. I, I'm not the best redstoner, don't get me, don't, don't get me wrong here. But I, I put together this piece, and it, in theory, should work, but it's just not. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't have enough spaces in here anyways, right? So, this is a sorting system that I had made, where inside of these, this would sort rotten flesh, so rotten flesh would go down through here. Gold would go through here, until I realized I need, I need one of these for gold nuggets, and for gold ingots. And then, I, these are supposed to be swords, which is like the final thing. I, I didn't want to have these in here, but the swords were not smelting. I thought maybe that would help them smell. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I thought. Uh, and then I kind of also thought, you know, wait a second. There's also going to be spawn eggs coming out of this thing. And I'm really starting to doubt. I've spent way more time on this than I wanted to. And I'm really starting to doubt the system. Maybe I have to replace them. Maybe if I like replace them, maybe that'll fix them. As you can see, this is not going well. This is a struggle. After entirely rebuilding it and making it a pretty big eyesore and a mess, I think I figured out the issue. This spot right here was interfering. So these are supposed to be the delivery hoppers that put it into the system. These are the sorting hoppers, and these are the hoppers that just kind of like coast over top and drop stuff into the sorted hoppers. But because these or right under these, they were just dropping directly in. So that's the issue. So I just tested it out where I put a whole bunch of stuff in, and this sorted rotten flesh perfectly. This one, gold nuggets, perfectly. This one, gold ingots, perfectly. This one, I'm gonna put eggs, like piglin eggs in, so nothing's gonna be sorted there yet. And then this is gonna be where the swords go into the furnace, which I don't know if they even go directly into the furnace, so if not, I might just put them into a chest and have them fill up a chest or something. Or, I don't know. But now the problem is, look at how much space this is wasted. So now that that entire catastrophe was sorted out, I very quickly got back to building the farm because I was 
pretty much done. All I had to do was add those extra chests to the sorting system and build the top spawn chamber, which was essentially just a big square with the spawner in the middle and some water pushing them all into the middle where they could meet their doom. Overall, the farm is nothing too crazy looking, but honestly, it's also not bad. It's, it's simplistic and it does work. So our sorting system fully works. We have our gold ingots here, which almost never drop when you're not killing them. We have lots of gold nuggets here. We have this chest is becoming... Ooh. Anyways, our sorting system is working. Once we get enough zombie spawn eggs, this will be our zombie spawn egg chest. Oh, wait. Uh, for some reason, they're not spawning right now. I think it's a light level thing. I think it's because it's daytime. When it was nighttime, this farm was going absolutely insane. A couple of them get stuck up there. It's not perfect because of the way I built it with the water. But when there's enough of them, they do get pushed down. I am kind of regretting this not being a more efficient method of killing if it was a drop method where they just drop and die this would not be as laggy one thing i've noticed is when they they really start like spawning and building up it drops my frame rate by quite a bit actually oh there it goes now that it's sundown it's spawning and you can feel it taking the fps away i mean when you get further away it's not that bad but look at this go you know what i have to test this out I have to go for a swing. This is ear-destroyingly loud, by the way. So, they're permanently mad now? How did you spawn? How did you spawn? Oh, God. Oh, hey, guys. Wait, how are- is that a zombie horde? Okay, it works. It does not work that well when it comes to me killing but it does work now we got to make an emerald farm the emerald farm is going to be super quick and easy it's going to be a dropper on both side it's going to drop them to their death it's going to be like this i i don't know about the evokers though i don't know what to do about the evokers i'm going to be honest about that i want totems of undying but i'm not trying to die and I also spent so much time building these two farms that I kind of wasted a lot of the time that I had. How are they getting out? I should not have angered them though. They are they are really loud. Look at all this rotten flesh. Okay, this is actually quite a bit of gold. Okay, so I've sat here thinking about it for a while, and I think it's probably my best interest with how much the frame rate drops in this area that I, I'm going to replace the creeper farm. I think we have plenty of gunpowder to go TNT hunting in the nether for some netherite. And between these guys at nighttime and those guys, we don't really need a third spawning area yet. So what I'm going to do is we're going to fly to the top of this and we're going to change the one creeper thing into vindicators. And I want tons of emerald. So we're going to... Ooh, and we got the villager in the center already. Perfect. Ooh, look at him explode into emeralds. Oh, we're gonna make so much money. <laughs> Let's go. So it's safe to say a lot of these farms are too good. They're literally too good. I kind of want to stripe this with emeralds, but I feel like it's not gonna stay an emerald one the entire time. I just think it'd be funny. Anyways, now that we got lots of emeralds, we can make a cool beacon. We have Bad Omen 5 for an hour and 30 and 40 minutes. 40 minutes. That's not great. You know what? Let's put together all of our iron real quick and see how many iron blocks we got and then decide whether we want to keep the farm on for that much longer or not. This is how much gold we have as well. So we're generating intense amounts of resources here so not so long story short i sat here you know taking iron out of these chests and making iron blocks and i only cleared out one chest and i ended up with one two three four five six seven stacks of iron blocks it's like overflowing i i think i need to stop this farm i am not gonna need this much iron for a long time so we're gonna we're gonna fly up to the top and we're going to turn off this iron farm. Uh, should I just turn it off or should I just... Let's just remove the eggs. Let's remove the eggs. Alright, the eggs are gone. The farm is now disabled. Thank 
god. Holy, dude. Anyways, now that our resources are all together, I want to work on making this place look nice. This place is a mess. We have our beautiful base, and then all of this is just random stone. So I want to get making nature. I want to get making lots of, lots of grass like we had planned. And I want to start naming all of these animals and giving them our home. That's going to be our final goal before day 100. Which means first, I want to make a super beacon. I want to put a super beacon somewhere. I don't know where. Maybe I can make like a centerpiece. I wanted to build a centerpiece. And I was thinking about building it maybe like right here. My only concern is how close it's going to be to the lucky block. Hear me out here. I make the lucky block the centerpiece. I build a big circle around this. And I never break this thing again. I know. It is one block lucky block. And I might do 200 days. Leave a like on the video if you want me to do 200 days. Because I, I have lots of other things I can do in this world. And that is exactly what I did. I spent the rest of this day turning the regular beacon in the center into a supreme nachos grande six tuple beacon. I now had all beacon buffs and I was ready to get to grinding out as much dirt as I possibly could. At this point, it was now day 91 and after a very, very sad and not so low-key irritating search on the internet for potential ways to farm dirt automatically, I came up with nothing. So it looks like I was now stuck for the next couple of days just non-stop crafting coarse dirt, turning it into regular dirt, and breaking it and spreading it around the different areas of my base. We have grass now. So we got like a grass field right here inside this area that connects here. And I actually started with over here, but I had an idea. Since I wanted over here to be like full of, you know, areas for animals, I was thinking right here will be like my little grass area. Then right here can be like a horse stable. Then we'll have a path this way. And I made this center kind of circle area. So you have like the center circle and I'm going to move the beacon to the very center. And then we're going to add like a grass spot around it. We're going to add paths around it. And this is going to be the new center. Every single time I always do the same thing where my ADHD just kicks in full speed. And it's like, Hey, you're going to do whatever we feel like doing when we feel like doing it. All right. So now that we got a lot of the stuff moved out of the way, we can fully terraform this nice big circle platform into a reasonable center. I wanted to add like dirt areas around this with some grass, some bushes, some trees, and really make this area nice and have like a round path that goes in a circle around this center piece. However, while setting this up, I kind of, I don't know what happened here. So I designed this shape in a way where this side has one additional space to that side. So this is technically slightly off centered that way from this dimension to that dimension. However, right here, it's perfectly centered. And if you go over here to the spot, these are my two centering blocks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. They, they do not center. This is blowing my mind right now. Circles in Minecraft are the worst thing to build. So with this beacon not being centered fresh on my mind and plans in my head for what this place could look like, I quickly got to work for the rest of this day outlying the wooden borders of the paths that are going to be around the beacon in between different patches of grass with trees and bushes and all kinds of things to make this place really feel like I was no longer trapped on a one block skyblock. And now that I had this pathing path laid out, I was prepared to get to work terraforming this location to making it look gorgeous. All right, so I spent a lot of time working on this place. And as you can see, I got a little carried away. Now, one thing I do want to note is this place kind of looks very similar to other styles I have built with in the past. And it's because I really just, I enjoy like the spruce and stone brick look of things but so i i added all these areas now so we have our nice little nature area over here with some different um some lighting some grass i put in a bunch of trees we got our cool little hot tub right here it's actually mainly just an excuse to have a infinite water source right here we have lots of entrances to get over here so that way it's nice and cozy it's not too crowded but it's also not too empty uh we moved the stone thing like i mentioned stone farm is no longer over here we added this place looks like infinitely different with just a little bit of simple pathing. 
We added this area with grass. I put trees. We have like lanterns hanging from the trees now. Gorgeous. We have all these paths that are nice and just cozy now. We have our beacon in the middle. Over here is not quite done. We still have this area that's grassed up, but not full of stuff. And then this area, I was just going to keep built out because in the future, I wanted to make this into our like farm area. Originally, I was planning on doing that now, but uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a poor planner of time. I Things take time, and this took a lot of time, so I didn't have enough time to, to work on that either. So if we do 200 days in one block, lucky block, we can always expand and make an even bigger area. Uh, over here is also not finished. Kind of basic, but I did get the pathing pretty far out. We have the original lucky block area over here. Kind of just a site for sore eyes, and I'm going to leave it that way. I want to leave it that way because I don't know quite what to do with it yet. So I got this area over here, all nice, with more pathing, more entrances here and there. And I stopped right about here because I'm not sure what I want to do with that platform. And then we also have our random, like, kind of crap dump chests everywhere. Just sitting here full of random junk. But, yeah, this place looks infinitely different. So much different. And if you noticed over here, we finally have a horse stable. It's kind of a basic, kind of a small horse stable, but it's nice. We have a lot of horses that I want to get in there and I want to name. All right, so the first thing we got to do if we are going to trade for a villager is we got to get as many emeralds as we can get here, which isn't really going to be a problem because these guys have just been like AFK dying. You better have name tags, man. That's all I'm going to say. And after I get as many name tags out of you as possible, you are going off the cliff. Come on, man. Books for emeralds? What is this? So with my limited amount of time that I had left and the limited amount of resources I had to trade with this villager, I just sat here throughout the night, very slowly working my way through his trades one book at a time until finally this man leveled up and I could progress at a decent pace. Oh, man. Aqua Infinity? Okay, that's... Dog water, but I'll take it. Some clocks. Everyone loves Minecraft clocks. The most useful item. Look at this. Look, it says it's nighttime. You know how I know? Oh. All right. Now that I've got name tags, it is time to get going. I have a literal list of names that I wanted to name. And the first one, I have to do it. I'm going to name one of my horses LeChonk. In honor of my last horse named LeChonk that... I named right before Scarlet and Violet came out. Let me know in the comments if you like LeChonk. Yeah, I actually got a really cool LeChonk shirt from Pokemon Center's website. Not sponsored, but like, I mean, Pokemon Center, you know, hit me up, honestly. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll take that sponsor. So it was now day 99, and I only had two more days in this world. And at this point, I didn't quite know what to do because a lot of the projects that I had planned would take way too much time effort i needed more resources and i would need to continue terraforming the sky to make more platforms just to add the grass not to mention getting more grass is not a quick or easy process it is a very slow and inefficient one so with those things in mind i decided to instead go back to my original plan and go tnt mining in the nether for some netherite because i mean when in doubt you have to end things with a bang. So I grabbed some sand out of the chest up here and I got down to the end portal where I sat here mass harvesting sand. While doing this, I had to be a little careful though because I didn't end up building a chunk loader in the overworld, meaning I can't actually go to the end while this is happening, which means all the sand that builds up in the end is just gonna sit on top of the hoppers and not actually go down into the hoppers. So, if I sit here for too long, when I eventually do go into the end, it could very well crash my game. So it is now nighttime. I do have the Evoker spawn egg and everything is ready to go. And I, I have a hero's potion ready to take these guys down. We're gonna fight them on equal footing. I'm not gonna put them in a spawn thing like this. I'm gonna beat them up over there. I mean, they, they do spawn Vex, but you know what? I'm, I'm feeling a little, we're, we're feeling a little adventurous today. But speaking of adventure, um, I did also 
come over here to check on this. And you may be noticing, wow, there's a lot of them. Look at this. Gold? Gold, but also other drops. Which makes you think, why are there other drops? Because the system is clogged. I'm going to tally up all this gold and we're going to fix this. Also, I know it's nighttime, but you know what? We're going to go into day 101 to do some TNT mining. It, it's still day 100, of course. It's, it's certainly not day 101. I, um, I'm just illiterate and I can't count. Sue me. Okay, it's no longer nighttime, so they're no longer spawning. That is kind of, I mean, all I have to do is put a roof on that and they would, they would keep spawning, but I don't want them to keep spawning. This thing is a mess. Like, all of my organization is screwed up now. I've managed to get majority of the gold out of here, but there's just, there's just so much stuff inside of these. This... This is not a good, this is not a good farm. It's way too small of a collection area for way too efficient of a farm. We're going to kill some evokers. And then after taking out our evoker friends, we can go ahead with our new totem is undying. And we can go to the, actually, I'm going to bring a bow as well, just in case. Yeah, with our new evoker egg spawner, we're going to go over to the spawner I placed way over there. And we're going to kill a couple of these guys to get ourselves some totems of undying, just in case any... I don't know, freak TNT accidents happen. All right, first things first, hero's potion out. Wow, that makes the game blinding. I'm gonna let it spawn one at a time and we're just gonna take them out. Please tell me they don't need darkness to spawn. There's, there's no way, right? It's an evoker. All right, we're gonna give this a second try. We wasted our potion, it seems. It's a little bit darker. It's not like pitch black. It's hard to tell because I have every buff known to man what if i take this guy into the nether you know what we're, we're gonna try that all right we're in the nether the known natural habitat of the evoker we go boom boom okay okay they are spawning now okay very fast is why am i like i can't hit him my aim is so bad i just gotta okay turn off that turn off that this is going well. Alright, so that went very well. I don't know why they actually- oh. Yeah, let's get rid of him before he becomes like a- a fun little easter egg for future me. Let's get rid of this dork over here. Come here, buddy. Don't spawn any- Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Why? The zombie pig boys do not kill Vex. It's annoying. So after taking out all the evokers and angering the piglin army, I sat here for what felt like eternity living through this literal like season of the walking dead with how much ridiculous stuff was happening. I sat here trying to kill them off faster than they could respawn. But the problem with piglins is as long as one of them nearby is still mad at you, they will all continue to be mad at you. After cleaning up the last couple of guys, things were finally over. I, I took out a lot of them. I also got a lot of Totems of Undying, and we got more like Evoker eggs, we got Vex eggs. That was pretty good. Um... Uh-oh. How is this place counted as a village? Oh no, there... Wait. The raid is dying. What is going on? I came back here for a flint and steel and the raid just spawned and now it's... Dying? It's because of this guy right here. Jorgen Von Strangle, you caused this infinite raid. If it does end, is it gonna spawn like Ravengers? So I think my spawners up there are tricking the raid system into thinking that, that the raid is respawning. That like, the wave is not going away. And I don't know how to fix it. So unfortunately, I kept smacking at them for a, a crazy amount of time. And they would not end up dying. They, it just, the closest I got it to was like a half sliver. So I'm going to take my chance here. And we're going to rocket our way up. And we're going to just... I guess, stop the spawners. Okay, we got the egg out of that one. Oh, the raid is doing its thing. Got the egg out of that one. I'm terrified that this raid is going to continue. Okay. All four spawners are 
incapacitated now. So if I kill the rest of these guys, is it going to spawn a full-blown raid? I am really scared. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Please, no. The Ravengers are going to break stuff. How do I stop a raid? Where are they going to spawn? Okay, so far we're okay. Oh, I see him. Oh, no. This is an actual raid. We're dealing with an actual raid here. All right, I guess we're... I guess we're doing... Oh, man. Ravengers are going to be scary. Oh, this is so bad. I'm just worried about the Ravenger. Ravenger is all I'm worried about. If I can take out him, we're good. Okay, Ravenger is... spotted. No, stop! You jerk! Those are my trees! No, he's killing my trees! You know how much time I spent building this stuff? Oh, you suck, man. You guys know how much time I spent landscaping this place? I hate all of you. No way. Ha, ah, look at you clowns. Look at you clowns. Ah, look at you now. You're all so small brain, feeble, stupid. Ha <laughs> ha. That is hilarious that they spawned down there. Wow, look at him go. Look at him go. All right, there we go. We did it. I did it. Wow, that took so long. And there are so many Vex now. And they messed up all of my trees and my shrubbery and stuff, man. Can you guys just like... All die to death for me, please. So, yeah, I did say we were going to go out with a bang, but that's not quite what I had meant. I had tons of TNT ready, and we were ready to get some netherite, but instead, I spent the last day fighting for my villages, my air quotes, villages, life, apparently. Because I took on a full raid with ease, too. There was a couple of casualties of damage around my property. They may have destroyed some trees. Wow, I sound like a 40-year-old neighbor that's insufferable. But yeah, we defeated a raid all on our own as a final test of endurance inside of this world. So here we are at the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. If you did make it this far, you are absolutely amazing. And I appreciate every last one of you. If you do like this video and you want me to do a 200 days in one block lucky block, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to leave a like. And of course, if you are new here and you want other amazing movies just like this one, then don't forget to subscribe. I also want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon patrons. Thank you all for helping me by going the full mile and supporting me for what I do. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon just like these lovely people, you can go down to the link in the description below. And on there, you can get access to old world downloads, custom mods that I had made myself, and just other random things that end up on there. Anyways, this has been Pain Domination. I love all of your faces, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.